Monday morning and welcome once again to Perkins Online. Um, well, did I tell you that um, I spoke yesterday about the prediction of bloody election and the question of what the government would do about this? Well, it is obviously being thought, up, thought about seriously in the cabinet. Uh, we gather that from the news that um, the cabinet discussed the matter yesterday. The Minister of National Security, uh, who is of the view that what this country needs are severe extreme and resolute measures no doubt seeing the opportunity to implement such measures on a full scale is going to be having discussions with um, the predictor of bloody elections the commissioner of police and is to go back to the Prime Minister with his advice. Don't be surprised, don't be surprised if what you hear is that we need these such severe, extreme and resolute measures in the form of a um, state of emergency question is of course uh, whether it is going to be um, pleasant in the minds of visitors coming into the country for Cricket World Cup if um, Cricket World Cup is being held in Jamaica under the conditions of a state of emergency maybe all the same they, they, um, maybe the, the visitors won't even realize that that is what is going on and um, will be totally unaffected by it um, of course the, <coughs> the need for the state of emergency may not be immediate you know a um, lot of crime occurring uh, a sort of spate of murders um, in the first week of the new year I believe um, we are now in the region of 36 persons murdered since the beginning of the year and today is the ninth. so we're only into the second week um, but of course more important is the is the issue of um, an election coming up um, and um, something has to be done to prevent the spilling of too much blood in the elections the Commissioner of Police, as I'm quite sure, uh, created a lot of anxiety in the country about by his talk of uh, having intelligence um, of a plan to spill a lot of blood in the elections and the piling up of guns to this end. Um, the talk about Cricket World Cup continues of course um, and um, we are hearing that the the tourism industry is already being affected there are cancellations um, cancellations of bookings and uh, at the same time we're hearing that Kingston is far from being 
Well, do we need to hear that? Or do we see it as we drive around and walk around the city? It is in a mess. And it, it is a shame to be bringing visitors here to go. Mark you, I hear they're fixing the South Camp Road. And, um, <coughs> and maybe the visitors will be brought carefully rooted on their way to Sabina Park so they won't see too much of the nastiness of the city. But did we hear that, um, that Sister P was taking some money out of the, which fund was it, the housing, Pet, Petro Caribe, the Petro Caribe fund, to, um, to beautify Jamaica, and that, um, how many, how many people, there are a lot of people going to be employed at $2,000 a week, uh, I believe there are some thousands of people, $2,000 a week each um, to beautify not just the city but Jamaica I think there were going to be 12,000 people employed the princely salary $2,000 a week hell of a lot of money isn't it is that below the minimum wage <laughs> But I don't see very much happening. And I'm just wondered, wondering whether Sister P has forgotten all about this. Um, and then we are hearing that school children in the vicinity of Sabina Park, which there are a number of schools in that vicinity, and some of these school children are having a difficult time because of the noise of equipment working in the Savannah Park area and um, and uh, the dust nuisance and there's an additional problem of um, no water so some of the schools are closing down or um, once again all of this is illustrating the lack of concern the lack of concern for people in Jamaica by the government of Jamaica preparations for the World Cup are so important that it doesn't really matter whether some school children can't go to school or if they go to school can't learn because of the noise nuisance and the dust nuisance and all the rest of it after all they are no better than the people of um, Discovery Bay or those of um, of Nain in St. Elizabeth whose houses are being flooded with dust from the bauxite companies and who are breathing in that dust and developing all, all sorts of respiratory illnesses they're not um, they're not anymore who, who the hell are they anyhow you know <laughs> none of them none of them springs from the bowels of any, any most honorable person so what does it matter ah <laughs> uh, well but that is how we are in Jamaica. We have no respect for the people of Jamaica. And when you consider the amount of money being put into this um, into this Cricket World Cup thing, right? And what it, what the things, the priorities that the government is ignoring in the course of doing this, it is a disgrace total disgrace right people you know every night almost on the television I didn't see one last night but um, this is exceptional there is a story carried particularly by CVM I think 
a story about some person and very often young people young persons um, having some medical condition or some condition that needs surgery they can't afford the surgery very often the surgery can't be done in Jamaica or so, so it is said they have to go abroad and they can't afford it they don't have the money and they're begging support from people to build up a fund to enable them to go very often it is life threatening conditions that they have or sometimes um, you know paralyzing conditions whatever and they can't they have to beg for help and you know that isn't solving that may help to solve that particular problem but for every one such person there are 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or more persons up there with similar conditions only CVM television or TVG or whichever hasn't yet got around to them and it again is disgraceful that the government of Jamaica has not provided you know I saw somewhere in one of the papers was it this morning um a headline suggesting that the issue of medical health whatever it is called health tourism medical tourism um, should be needs to be raised again we need to provide health care services at cheaper rates than people can get them out as I suppose in countries like the United States right so people would come down here to have surgery done or whatever how far are we away from having the conditions in our hospitals that would make people want to do that huh? and why would we be so concerned to do it for tourists but can't do it for our own people we take a break okay thank you very much um, I see that the government has come around to denying the truth of Mr. Golding's allegation that there's some there is some South American uh, leader whose country apparently is flooded with money um, who made an attempt to influence elections in in Colombia without success put a lot of money to one side tried the same thing with um, St. Lucia again without success um, and is trying it again in Jamaica government has said that um, Mr. Golding is talking his usual nonsense um, they, um, and um, they are sort of dismissing the allegation that he made in similar fashion to their dismissal, the initial dismissal of the Trafigura um, matter. Um, now, what does that tell us? <laughs> does that tell us that what <laughs> does that suggest that what Mr. Golding? was saying is probably true <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I don't know what you think, but um, but that is the nature of the denial. It, and I tell you something. It was brought home to me last night. I think on nationwide, they carried a um, what do they call it? It's a anyway. It's a review of um, 2006. Uh, six, the 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 um the big news items, you know, and they carried the traffic guru mat, and we heard some of the statements being made by people like Mr. Pickersgill and um, Mr. Knight and uh, the Attorney General, who was saying that unless there is um some hunky-punky can be proven then that's an end of the matter and um, it just struck me that um, that the tenor it was even more vigorous you know and in, in this case it's only the Mr. Buchanan the Minister of um, Information that has ventured to talk about to refute what Mr. Golding has said. But, um, you know, the, the drift was similar. And one just wonders, um, one just wonders whether, um, whether there may not be more truth to it than Mr. Buchanan would like us to think. And Mr. Golding said in his party meeting that there was a at what was it at Trafigura number two coming up he doesn't want to disclose it now but um, one looks forward with great interest to hearing what it is this one is about anyway let's get to our telephone oh um, oh yes I must um, I must remind you of what my friend, the essence of what my friend, the deacon, said on his program on Friday about the justice system in Jamaica. It's a deep systemic problem, you see. The, the justice system in this country was never designed to really provide swift and effective redress for, the, for all the citizens of this country. The justice system of this country was never designed to provide swift and effective redress for all the citizens of this country. Then, could I ask you this, Deacon? For whom was it? Well, what was it? What was it designed to provide? And for whom? What was the justice system of Jamaica designed to provide? And for whom? The, the deacon said elsewhere in in that discussion that the um, it was nevertheless not a bad system, or nevertheless a good system. It was. Um, the question is, how can a system of a justice system? that it was never designed to provide swift and effective redress for all the people of this country be in any sense a good system what can there be good about it if it wasn't designed to provide swift and effective redress for all the citizens of this country anyway let's 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 hear you hello hello yes good morning sir hey good morning mr uh -huh. would you speak up for me yeah i have a problem here with the jps jps yeah uh-huh i who, who does I, you Hello? know anybody who does it? <laughs> Yesterday morning, Mr. 
I went to the JVS office and I paid a bill. Uh -huh. I paid it at 9.42. Uh -huh. And I went back home. I feed my dogs. I download things from computer. You did what? I go back home. I feed my dog. I don't fool around. Don't uh -huh. from a computer side. And I left my house minutes to 12. At when? At minutes to 12. Yes. Light was there. I understand in the evening. But they came and they disconnect the light. They did? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I called them and I said to them that, um, but I paid the bill, how, how can this happen? And I sure it's not in the morning it was disconnected. I, I was there. They're telling me now that if the lady said to me that if I don't notice, it's the paymaster in the GPS office. So I said, what that have to do with me? She said, um... You, you, you didn't ask her what, what, what contract you had with the paymaster? <laughs> No, I asked her what that have to do with me. She said the system is not upgraded until 24 hours. That's in the JPS office now. That's what? That, that is in the JPS office. I went to the JPS office and paid the bill. Uh-huh. And, and she's saying that the system don't upgrade until 24 hours. A matter of fact, I just come off the phone with them and she don't even see the payment for the bill now. Uh -huh. And she's saying that I must go down to the JPS office and pay the reconnection fee. Tell her to go on. Let me tell you something. If I were you, I, I had an experience, not unlike that, many years ago. Uh -huh. Right? It was with the telephone company. Uh -huh. Right? I, my phone was out of order. And somebody told me that they had tried getting me on the phone. And there was a, a, a thing on it um, indicating that the phone had been disconnected for reasons of non-payment. Something like that. Right? So I, I checked it myself. I called the number and I heard this thing. Uh -huh. Right? I had paid the money. I went to the bank and I asked them whether the check had been negotiated and it turned out, yes, it had been. Right? And I saw a copy of it. And I got back on the phone called the telephone company, asked to speak to the managing director, and told him that I was giving him one hour uh -huh. to get my phone reconnected. Right? Which he did. It was reconnected in less than half an hour. <laughs> right? If I were in your position, I would not be paying any reconnection fee. Not one damn. But this, this and if is my necessary, I, mean, I would go to the Privy Council. She's saying to me, right? That, um, uh, obviously, uh, you are not aware of the JPS clause. Yes. Once the due date has passed, you are liable for disconnection. You, once what? Once the due date has passed. The due date? Yeah. When was the due date? The due date was in the, the last of December, the 27th. I beg your pardon? Uh-huh. Hold on just a minute. Speak up louder. Okay, now hear you. The due date was the 27th of December. And you paid it when? I paid it yesterday. Oh. You know? I'm saying to her that, listen, up to the point that when you came to my house to disconnect, I never owe you no, no money. No, that does sound... No, no, no. It sounded to me like you don't have much of a case. Huh? Um, you allow the due date to pass. Mm-hmm. Right? T t long past. Mm -hmm. It could have been disconnected any t on any day since between the um, the the due date and now the tw the twenty seventh mm -hmm. between the twenty eighth of December mm -hmm. and day before yesterday you wouldn't yeah. be calling me now would you? True. Eh? True. Yes. But I am saying to them that I is not is I went to the JPS office. Uh huh to pay the bill. Yes. And up to this morning, they, they are not aware that I paid my bill. Yes. You know, and th th where I, when, they, the, when the dispatching is done, when they send out for this connection, up to that point, I paid my bill. Uh -huh. Yes, know? but um, 
uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that you have such a, a much of an argument. Because, um, you know, the... The, the, so the, why is it that the, in the payment the, 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 fund, the payment was long overdue, uh -huh. right? And um, they may well have made arrangements for the disconnection to be done on that day, yesterday, yeah. right? Um, you went day before yesterday. No, you went yesterday. Yeah. You went yesterday. Mm. Their internal arrangements, when they looked at the thing, they, the money was long overdue. So they told the, the people yesterday morning, let us say, to disconnect you. Well, the team went out, um, went around doing other things, disconnecting here, there, and thing. And they got to you after 12 o'clock yesterday, right? But, but you had gone a couple of hours before that, no? Yes, but what I'm saying... Yes, but because they I don't have think a, you can hold them guilty. They are saying to me that had I paid, when I paid the bill, I should have faxed them the bill. And that would have been okay because their system now would have been upgraded. Ah. So the minute that the system is upgraded, you are cool. Yes. Why is it that in the JPS office... You pay your bill and the system not quite upgraded until 24 hours. Well, I but don't know. had I paid it the day before, I still would have been disconnected. Well, no, but, no, but no, yes, no. I don't think you have an arg much of an argument. So, okay, pay the bill on time. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello. 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 You're listening to the radio, sir. Stop listening to the Hello. radio. Hello. Yes. Morning, Morty. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not uh -huh. bad. Can I ask a question, Mr. Bergen? By all means. How long now since you're actually on radio? How long since I've been on radio? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, intermittently, since... Uh, uh, <laughs> sometime in the 1960s, I believe. <laughs> so you actually had radio before I was born. Is that so? <laughs> well, they, they probably... Yes, I was on... I did... Um, I did a program on Radio Jamaica. Um, What's Your Grouse? What was it called? It was called What's Your Grouse. Okay. I think that was my first... I think that was my first essay into radio. Uh -huh. um, it was a talk show, at, um, but it came on at night. Okay, what, what was that talk show based on? Well, like this, I suppose, um, you know, whatever people wanted to talk about. Okay, I think you should um, try and do something, Mr. Perkins, to make um, tapes like those available for, for, your, for your listeners. Yeah? What is that? I think you should make those tapes available. Those tapes? But, yeah, yeah, that well, you I had done in the 60s. So that I'm the sure Radio Jamaica has dumped them. I beg your pardon? I say I, I haven't got those tapes, and I'm sure that Radio Jamaica would have dumped them by this, you know. <laughs> um, they're yeah, not better than that. The generation now would probably like to listen to hear the views of people who was before them. Uh-huh. You know, what, what sort of problem? But I, it wasn't consistent, you know. It wasn't... Um, I mean, I I was fired from time to time, and um, at one point I went into agriculture, into dairy farming. Um, eventually, but I, eh? but I suppose your passion was for being a dog show. Not really, no. Um, not no, not particularly. Not particularly. No. Okay, because the program, you know, it has its passionate part of it, you know what I'm saying? A big fan? No, the program has its, you know, you could hear the passion when you're speaking, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. But passion? Yeah, 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 the oh, passion. So it? I thought you had a passion for, you know... Oh, Lord. For, 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 because normally when someone have a passion for something, they tend to do it very professional. <laughs> well, I don't know. 
Uh, but you know, I've, 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 as I said before, you were on the radio before I was born. But from I've been listening, I, I always hear you quoting um, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And you know, things. So I'm just wondering if you know, I do acknowledge um, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the first, and um, you know, I, I've read some of some of the things he had said in his time. Selassie. And, yeah, His Majesty Haile Selassie the first. Uh-huh. I have read some things that he has said in his time, uh-huh. and um, things that I found now to be profound, important for this generation. And I've never heard you quote in any. So I'm just wondering if you have ever read and the speeches or the philosophy of His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the First. I know I have not read that. You have never read any of his speeches. No. And you have never made any attempt to. Well, uh, I, because I, why I, I ask, I, Mr. Perkins? This is a gentleman of royal stature in his time. He was highly respected by the president of the United States of America, um, the United Nations, the League of Nations, and the world entirely. Uh-huh. And looking at his biography, I would have thought that at some point in time, you would have wanted to. You know, I don't know if do you know about him? His works that he. When was that biography time. published, sir? I beg your pardon, sir? When was that biography published? Um, I, I think that biography was published in the, quite possibly the 70s. Uh-huh. 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 The, or the, the no, I, I have not read it. It's going into the 80s. But, uh-huh. but I'm not sure, quite sure about the release of it. It's, uh-huh. it's called Selected Speeches of His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the First, and uh-huh. um, he was. Well, there. that's not a biography. Huh? That's not a biography. N- no, I know. I, I'm saying this is one of these are. This is the selected speeches of His Majesty. Uh huh. This biography is different. He's telling you about his own personal life story. I see. Yes. Uh-huh. Precisely. So, and in 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 one of the selected speeches, he was saying, in every community, there is the strong and the weak, the honest and the treacherous. The rich and the poor. The police officer, therefore, is duty bound by law to protect the oppressed, to defend the upright, to haunt the criminals, and in general to uphold the law. The work of the policemen can be facilitated only through the cooperation of our people. And when this cooperation is expressed in deeds, the contribution of those who served should not be underestimated. Therefore, each and every one of us has to play our part. Uh-huh. What is that telling you, Mr. Perkins? Huh? What is a speech like that telling you? Well, I I think it is a a, a very correct statement. You think so? Yes. Uh huh. So I am saying I've never heard you come in saying I've always heard you talking about Shakespeare. So I'm wondering if you have never ventured into other fields, you know? Well, I mean, um, um, Shakespeare is not the only person, the only writer that I've quoted. No, you haven't, but I, I figure more that Shakespeare is one of your favorites. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's wrong with that? Huh? What's wrong with that? No, nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. Because Shakespeare, never... Shakespeare was a very great writer. He was a very great writer. A very great artist, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, so, you know, we're just saying, yeah, to have... I'm you wouldn't agree with that, would you? I beg your pardon? You wouldn't agree with that. I wouldn't agree with that? Yes. Are you, why, why, why didn't you ask me if I agree with that? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just putting it another way. Uh, w- all right. Would you, would you not agree with that? Of course I would agree with oh, that. Oh, yes, well. Okay, because remember, you know, Mr. Perkins, you would choose your words very carefully. You know. Uh-huh. Am I not right? I cho- if I cho- that I choose my words carefully? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I hope so. But you would say that about yourself, though. Huh? You would say that, that you choose your Well, I, I try to choose my words carefully, yes. And you would say you're successful in doing so. Huh? You would say that you're successful in doing so. Well, I hope so. I, I from time to time, like anybody else, I, I make mistakes. I have lapses. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, the more egregious mistakes I... Hope to avoid. Okay, okay. Well, I wouldn't like to be to be heard saying that um, some anything about the country to whom we belong. <laughs> uh huh. 
You know, I'd like to also like to talk about you, Mr. Perkins, is um, customer services. Huh? I would like to talk about customer services in Jamaica. Yes. And I think, I'm not so sure if the government would, um, or has there been a system in, implemented in which people who are, you know, dealing with, with customers uh-huh. knows the correct way of treating customers. I mean, some of these shops that you go in Jamaica, especially, you know, where you go to buy food, this is the part that disgusts me most, is that you go in there and it's as if you're actually begging something. Where is this? Into a restaurant? Yeah, in, into restaurants. Like, you know, quite what do you a mean few you're, shops. Quite oh, a few oh, shops. I don't understand. Why, you, why is the impression given that you're begging something? Well, put it, when, you go into, when you go into these places, Mr. Perkins, if these people understand customer services... We, we, you're not speaking directly into the telephone. Okay, can you hear me now, Mr. Yes, Perkins? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm saying when you, when you go into some of these places and you see the impression on, on people's face, no smiles... As if you actually you, you order something and you have to wait there even of any time over five minutes just for someone to take your order. Uh-huh. And you know I've seen it and I'm saying some of these people. But does that happen only in restaurants? No, no, no. It happens. I'm just saying it disgusts me most. Uh-huh. Because but what do you going, think the government should do that, about that's this? That's what. That's where you're going to eat food, Mr. Perkins. And you know if you're going, you know it depends on how you acknowledge food is as you know what I'm saying because. If you, as an individual, going to buy something to eat and someone is vexed serving you, would you eat it? Somebody, and somebody is what serving him? Vexed, you know, the, the face push up and, you know, as if, you know, and puffing out and as if the world is on their shoulder. Well, if you, if you have reservations about that, sir, I suggest that you don't, you don't eat it, you don't, you don't patronize that restaurant again? You know, so I'm saying it's good. You go somewhere else? P- precisely, but I am saying most places that you go, Mr. Perkins, this is the sort of impression I get that you have to actually, you know, beg, begging people to serve you. And I is say, that so? Is, that's not the correct, I, I beg your pardon, sir? Uh-huh. That's not the correct way of running a business. I would like, I would prefer to know, and if, it even happens in most of these government offices, you know. Well, it's the way, it's part of our culture in this country, you know, we, um, it is noticeable that sometimes you go into business places and um, you, you, they give you the impression that you're, you're begging them to serve you, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I am also saying that, you know, I've had the privilege of being in South Africa, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. And, you know, I went into a restaurant in South Africa. This was in um, Johannesburg. Uh-huh. And after they serve the food on the table, they, they all hand together. You know, we, we pray here. And they, they bow leaving the table. Uh-huh. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm saying we have to compete with customer service like that. If we're talking about tourism, uh-huh. our people here are going to have to know that there are other countries in the world that people will go and can afford to go. Yes. People are not bound by here like there's some magnet pulling them here. Yeah. So when they come here and they using our facilities, we have to serve them with pride, and not just overseas foreigners. Well, I think that that, that applies to. From here I think that that applies to our domestic um, customers too. That's, um, what the, that's what I'm saying. Because that is what we keeps have to treat first for ourselves. Yes, biz- business is about providing um, service, providing whatever our uh, goods, whatever to customers. Precisely. And if it isn't done in a way that encourages the customer to come back, then your business is going to be in trouble. And and that's what I'm talking about, uh-huh. Mr. Well, Perkins. If where you find that, sir, just move to another place, no? Okay? All right, Mr. Perkins. All the so, best to you. As I said before, um, b- before I go, there's a... Um, there's another speech that His Majesty had done, which which was, um, I think he did that in the United um, Nations when it was formed in 1945 in San Francisco, when he was addressing um, the philosophy of the world. I think Bob Marley came and, and sang it over in, in his words. Uh-huh. Even speeches like those, Mr. Perkins, up until today, we're seeing the fulfillment of speeches like those. I see. You know, when he's saying, until the philosophy which holds one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned, yes. until there's no longer first. All right, sir. 
Thank you very much. All the best to you. Okay, thank you very much. We're back on land. Hello? Uncle. Hi. How are you? Morning, ma'am. Uh-huh. I What's happening? I want to discuss with you some important matters. Oh? Yes. Uh-huh. Important matters? Yes. Uh-huh. Mr. Golin has mentioned at the council to hear a meeting. Speak up a bit for me. Mr. Golin uh-huh. has mentioned at the council to hear a two meeting on Sunday uh-huh. about this foreign country who interested in spending some money uh-huh. in our el- upcoming election. Yes. But before Mr. Golin mentioned it at that meeting, Every little corner you go to and you have a discussion with well-known PNP supporters. Uh-huh. They will say... Do you have discussions with well-known PNP supporters? Supporters. Yes? They will say... But they don't know that you are no longer a, a <laughs> well-known PNP supporter. They will say to eh? you... Yeah, yes, man. They know that? Yeah, man. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. They will say to you, well, thank God that their finance man returned back to power. Their finance man returned back, back to, power? to power? Who is their finance man? Well, there's a particular country in which you have an election the other day. Uh-huh. Where a certain man, from time to time, he will visit Jamaica. And he have returned back to power. Oh. And they are saying, once he returned back to power, Rear funds is concerned, there's no problem, because he has the cash. He has the cash to care. <laughs> well, all right, good, good, part, good question. Uh-huh. You understand? And so, when Mr. Golin mentioned it on Sunday, yes, it was really nothing new to the average man. Uh-huh. But what surprised me now is when the spokesman the new information minister and cabinet secretary uh-huh. is denying it uh-huh. in saying that there is no knowledge and the argument is fraud and so on. Uh-huh. Then you, you have to question the credibility of this new information minister. Of the what? The credibility of this individual, the finance and new information minister. Why? Because... He have been saying some things from the other day which you have to wonder if he, I don't want to use a strong word if he need to do a better laser test. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Mr. Perkins. Why would you say something like that, sir? Mr. Perkins, when a man like that can come out over the weekend, I don't know if you hear it, uh-huh. and say to the country, that the fifth term will be for the Jamaican people. He said it? Yes! But that is not the first time it was said. Uh, 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 Mr. Perkins, I am getting to you, Mr. Perkins. When they were going for the second term, the PNP said the second term will be for the Jamaican people. Oh, is that so? And they got the second term and we didn't see it. Yes, they they, they called up. They could have mentioned it in the third term uh-huh. because it would have too close to say it in the second and the third. So when when they say that the fifth term uh-huh. will be for the Jamaican people, uh-huh. that would seem to be suggesting uh-huh. that the first, the second, the third, the third and, the fourth <laughs> and the fourth were for somebody else. Yeah. Mr. Perkins. Or somebody else. May I ask you this, Mr. <laughs> Perkins? If I come to you... Uh-huh. And I say to you, Mr. Perkins, come with me, come do a job with me. Yes. And I receive four pay day. Uh-huh. And don't give you one red cent. <laughs> would you would you go back to work with me with the fifth term time, Mr. Perkins? For the fifth week uh-huh. or month. Uh-huh. And um, you're telling me now that this month this will be month mine. This month for you, Mr. Perkins. Um, well, the question is whether I can believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Perkins, when I say to people, you know, 
that these guys... Matthew, um, mm -hmm. being the person I am, uh -huh. I wouldn't have gone back with you for the second. <laughs> well, for the second term, <laughs> Mr. Well, Perkins. Uh, we, we're not talking about terms now. We're yes. talking about um, <laughs> second week work. Second week. Second week of work. Well, Mr. Perkins. Yeah, if the first week I didn't get any payment, yes, sir. You, you gobbled it all up for yourself. Yes, sir. To use a famous word. Yes, sir. Um, uh -huh. Or a famous uh -huh. person's word. Uh -huh. um, you gobbled it all up yes. for yourself. Then I don't see what I'd be doing there the second week. And when you look at me, Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. when you start out with me for the first week, you realize that I was a slim person. Uh -huh. And after I collect four weeks' salary, you start putting become, on a lot of weight. I become very fat. Uh -huh. That I can't even bend to tie my shoes lace. Mm -hmm. I can't wall up my head because too many fat in my neck back. And that is exactly what has happened to these guys in leadership. Oh, is that so? After the fourth, after fourth term taking it for themselves, Mr. Perkins. Well, it's probably is a lack of exercise, you know. <laughs> when you look at the quality vehicles in which they drive them, the SUV and you name them, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. And when you look at the, 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 the size of body today, Mr. Perkins, they, 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 they really take the old Ford term for themselves. Well, you know, sir, my belly full, me no want no more. And Mr. Buchanan, I'm... Draw down low, I feel your time now. Mr. Buchanan, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> of the artists coming to us as a Jamaican people. Eh? Now, I'm saying that information, Minister. You hear me? Yes. Of the art now to come to us as a Jamaican people to say that the fifth term will be given to us, Mr. Perkins. Yes. And they want us to believe them, Mr. Perkins. Well, I, I don't know, sir. I, I, I think they, they, they must be slipping a bit. <laughs> because... Um, you know, I heard Mr. Patterson uh -huh. saying at the party conference yes, sir. that um, that um, mm -hmm. Sister P uh -huh. was not only the best hope yes. for the fifth term, mm -hmm. she was the only hope. <laughs> yes, I remember that. When, when, when I hear that, <laughs> I said, but this com is, is strange coming from the man who has presided over all these years. Yes. Sir. They, they, over the government. Yes. Right? Yes. Because what he must be saying, mm -hmm. what he has to be saying, mm -hmm. is that um, it is no use going to the people mm -hmm. on the basis of, of, of your record exactly. over those four terms. Exactly. Right? Yes. No, absolutely no use. Forget that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Just go on the basis that Sister P, this beautiful, very attractive lady. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm hmm who um, is loved by the poor and mm -hmm. all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. it, she is the means that you have to use of inducing the the poor people of the country to vote for you. Mm -hmm. You're perfectly right. right. You're now, per that, what you are telling me mm -hmm. that Mr. Buchanan has said, mm -hmm. and I heard it said before, mm -hmm. um, about the fifth term mm -hmm. will be the Jamaican will be for the people <laughs> right <laughs> that is an, it, well is another way of saying precisely what Mr. Patterson was saying exactly that the um, that the other four terms uh -huh. were not for the people it was not for the people Mr. then Pro for whom were they the, 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 the fourth term which, which they got already yes was just for the leadership of the government Mr. Perkins is that so Tell Mr. Perkins, you, you, you need glasses to see that? No, sir, I, I, know, I know of one man at least who got, um, got $84 million uh -huh. for renting his um, equipment for, yes. two, two, for two weeks. Yes. Yeah, and he was that, one of the leaders. You, 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 you know, Mr. Perkins. He you said something you, about being genetically limited. You, you know, we usually have this apartment which you call name public work. Mm 
Yes. And they cut it out and bring in the NWA now, uh -huh. which is an agency. Yes. The works now in which the NWA award now goes into contract. Contract. The public work usually do the work itself. Yes. The works now goes into contract. And when you count on your and Mr. Perkin, the people them who are getting the contract today, uh -huh. they are known party faithful, and they are are come. They become multi billion years, Mr. Perkin. Uh -huh. And these things happened in the past four terms. They become... You know, so you want me to tell you something? Mm -hmm. I started driving a car. Yes, sir. Somewhere about 1950. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And I have driven all over this country. Yes, sir. In, the, in that time. Mm-hmm. Right? And I don't think mm -hmm. that I have ever seen the roads of this country in as bad a condition as they are now. <laughs> Mr. Perkins, you know why I laugh? Huh? If you got the chance to watch the TVJ news last night, uh -huh. the 7 o'clock one, uh -huh. and see where the resident in Portland again were complaining and demonstrating about the bad roads. Yes. And your friend who fight so hard to become mayor for Port Antony, Benny White, uh -huh. were saying that the reason why <laughs> Portland is suffering from so many bad roads is because there's no asphalt That's in the island. In the country. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Yeah, you understand. And the NWA have more asphalt than ever before. In which? The NWA, the works agency, uh -huh. they have asphalt right now in the island. How you know? Yes, man. Because same time when when you say that, I know a particular person, and they say they have asphalt right now in the island. And Benny White is saying the reason why Portland is suffering from so many bad roads is because there's no asphalt in the island, Mr. Perkins. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I was in St. Mary recently, sir, and I came across some roads mm -hmm. that really are yes. in appalling condition. Yes, Mr. Perkins. You are so right, Mr. Perkins. Right? You are so right. But, Mr. Perkins, you realize... If you go all up into Hamilton Mountain and those places... Why? Eh? <laughs> Mr. Perkins, you have one. Hold on one minute. Okay, thank you very much. We're back on land. Hello? 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 Yes, uh-huh. You know, I'm next for dinner, Mr. Perkins. Why? You know, history is something I love because it teaches me a lot. Uh -huh. And when listen to you and you go back in history, I learn a lot from it. Oh, is that so? But you keep away a particular information from us, your listeners. What is that? In the sense that Norman Manley founded the PNP nineteen what thirty eight? I don't know that I would say that Norman Manley founded the PNP. The PNP were founded in nineteen thirty eight then. Yeah, well, yes, but I, it. I, I think it was 1938. Yes. Norman Manley was its founding leader. Leader, all right. The well, idea of founding the PNP oh, came oh. from other people mm -hmm. who, who induced yes, Norman Manley uh -huh. um, with the help of Edna Manley yes, um, uh -huh. to accept the leadership of the party. Uh -huh. In fact, um, uh -huh. they, were, they went between himself and uh -huh. Jack Smith. Yes. Right? trying to get one of them to take it on. Um, but the, the founders of the PNP were people like um, yes, O.T. Fairclough, uh -huh. uh, Frank Hill, uh -huh. Ken Hill, uh -huh. Richard Hart, uh -huh. uh, I think Noel Nethersoul was in there, uh -huh. um, and some others like that. Yes. Um, um, why, why, why I mention that, the daily chairman for the PNP, Mr. Bobby Peters Gill, 
have come out and said that since Portia Simpson become the leader of the PNP, you have more people offering themselves as candidate to run for the PNP. You remember I made that statement? Who said that? Bobby Peters Gill. Since Portia Simpson have become president of the party, of the party, you have more you have, people, you have more people offering, offering themselves, themselves oh. to run as candidate for the PNP. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were looking at the history. It is the first time on the history of the PNP that they have been in an election here, expecting to call an election any time now. And up to now, they can't find a candidate for a seat in which the present member of parliament is a PNP member of parliament. Uh -huh. And they can't find a candidate up to now to run against the rivers in West Portland. Uh -huh. It has never happened in the history of the PNP before. Can I believe that, Mr. Perkins? Um, I don't know of it happening, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. But it, I don't know how far away the election is. I mean, well, 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 you, you, well they have up Is to it likely that we would have the the, the cricket World Cup, uh -huh. which seems to be um, uh -huh. the focus of all interest at the moment? Yes. Uh -huh. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, man. No um, that's occurring in in March, no? Yes. March, April. Uh -huh. Um. So I, I, I doubt that they would have the election before that. No, they are trying everything for June. For June? Yes. And that is the reason why Minister Davis has gone back on his word on the first world, which should have implemented the first of this month, and say he will make the announcement come April. Yes. Because if they implement it now and people start to call it that extra $1,000, then by June they would have forgotten everything. I see. So he wanted to come with that cake with a little icing on it to make it look so beautiful to you and go into the election that to, immediately. To, to make icing, man, I'm there and I have fun. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. understand. The um, mm -hmm. um, housing trust fund, mm -hmm. the um, traffic euro, well. <laughs> because remember the information. No, the um, Petro Caribe yes. money. That the money the, that is the money they are depending upon and expecting to get some more. Well, from what Mr. Golding said, I uh -huh. expect that um, uh -huh. there would be some <laughs> funding directly to the party. Yes, know? yes, uh -huh. you understand. So, so that, that that is what I want to say to you. It has never. I don't it. think they have any shortage of funds, man. Eh? I don't think they have any shortage no, of funds. No, they, they, they don't have any shortage of funds in the sense, but as I said, they want to go in the budget with a lovely... You better mind the wipe you out in this election. <laughs> I hear the commissioner of police say, saying that they, mm -hmm. there are people who are um, mm -hmm. storing guns and who are planning a bloody election. Well, the Minister of National Security expects to meet with them um, come tomorrow. Yes. And after that, he expects to go back to Cabinet. Uh-huh. To, to, uh, so we might get some announcement. Well, I'm, I'm expecting to get to hear that there are some severe, <laughs> extreme, and resolute measures being put into effect. <laughs> So the, the announcement might bring me back to the memory of what, 76? Well, you better mind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you better mind, you know, find yourself at Red Fence. <laughs> or, no, no, you would be Black Fence, no? <laughs> <laughs> what, Mr. Perkins? Huh? It came to be very interested, you know. What? The election? In the sense that the PNP will try a lot of things, you know, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. but the Labour Party won't try anything. But I am telling you, you know, Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. when you go out and stand up on the road, can you know both parties have the little arm band now? The, the PNP, both parties uh -huh. have something you call them arm band. 
where people wear on them hands. Yes. The PNP has their one in orange and the GLP has their one in green. Yes. And when you stand up on the roadside and look at the amount of people who pass you with those bands on their hands, uh-huh. 80% of them is passing with the one green on their hand, you know? Go away, man. Mr. I am prepared to bet you uh-huh. my wife. I can't lose her. I am pe- and that's the last bet I will have ever take. I am prepared to bet you my wife. That's when you stand up on to the bet road. You my, bet you what? My wife. Your wife? <laughs> yes. Which one of them? <laughs> Mr. Perkins, I am prepared. To bet you the one I love very much more than the rest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have your eyes somewhere else now. 80% of the people will pass you on the road with an armband on their alpha political party is green, Mr. Perkins. Is well, green, Mr. Perkins. Maybe the reason for that is that the PNP are not showing their hand at the moment. Mr. Perkins? Because you are so busy during the days, and by the time you finish work, you have to rush home. Why well, I never see nobody with an armband. Mr. Pri, you, because you're busy in the studio. But you you start to notice this as from today, since I say it to you, Mr. Perkins, mm. and you will realize that 80% of the people passing armband for a political party is green, Mr. Perkins. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. You have a nice day, Mr. Perkins. Okay. Take care. Uh, hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon. Hello? Uh, oh, Lord, sorry about that. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Morning to you. Hello? Hello? Yes? You sound as if you're coming from a great distance. Uh, would you yes, speak up for me? From where? I'm something is wrong. Something is wrong with that. Oh. I'm calling from Pennsylvania. From where? I'm something is wrong. Something is wrong with that overseas line, you know. Um, I don't know because I can hear you clearly. Yes, but but um, but I'm not hearing you very well. I wonder if we can turn up turn up the sound a bit. I'm speaking from speaker hall. Can you eh? hear me better now? Can you hear me now? Are you on the cell phone? No. No? Well, speak directly into the, um, into the, into the mouthpiece. Eh? You're calling from Pennsylvania. You're calling from Pennsylvania? Yes. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Yes, I'm listening to you on the internet. Uh-huh. I'm, I just called to say something about, someone said something about the supermarket today when they went into the store. This, you have that guy giving you a favor when they're serving you? Yes. I noticed that because I went to a few stores with my brother-in-law a few years ago when I was in Jamaica. And the thing I said to my wife, is they act like they're doing you a favor because here, he went it supposed to snow and all the supermarkets are filled. They go to the cash with, and you go to check your stuff out. They always say hi. And when you finish, the last thing they say to you, have a good one. Uh-huh. To show you that they appreciate your business. Uh-huh. Are you, are you hearing me, Mr. Perkins? I'm, not, I'm hearing you, but you not very me? well. There seems to be something wrong with the line. I don't know if you're ever going to call you back. We've, yes, all right, if you would. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, but we've been having a problem with that line since yesterday, I believe. Okay, hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You sound it. Mr. Perkins? Yes, Mom. Yes, go ahead. I'm calling from Anata Bay. Anata Bay? Yes. Uh-huh. And I'm visiting and, um, my mother. 
I'm just calling in regards to the the state of the road. Oh hell. <laughs> I can't believe, I won't call it potholes, I call it crater holes. Craters? Yes. Yes. They and look like something that boom. Uh, right. Fell in. <laughs> and the thing is that it's causing a lot of damages to people's cars. Yes. And uh, I overheard last night also that they're talking about there's no asphalt for the road. Yes. Considering St. Mary to be a place where rain falls, you know, so often. True of Portland, too. Right, and Portland. Yes. I think it was so ridiculous to make a statement like that. Well. <laughs> that we don't have any asphalt. Yes. And the fact that, you know, we have tourism that we have to consider about. Yes. And over the years that I've been coming home to visit, it has been the same situation. Uh -huh. They throw some mall in the road, and by the time rain falls the next day... It's gone it's again. It's of no use. Yes. And, and I look here, Mom. The, 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 look here. I, I cannot avoid the impression that the roads are not being properly constructed. But right? somebody needs to do something. All this business of using mall for the um, on the surface of on the structure of the road, um, and the little bit of asphalt that you see on top of it. Uh -huh. You go and look at any uh, look at any one of these asphalted roads, right? Right. Where there is the one of the craters that you talk about, you look around the edges of that crater uh -huh. at the thickness of the asphalt that you see there. Right? Right. And sometimes it's not an inch. Hello? Or a little more than an inch. Okay, but I'm saying, I was suggesting that, you know, there are so many houses. The neighbors need to get together and have like a little block, you know, a yes. block section. We're in, you do your little block. This one, the other Ho Hold on just a moment for me. Hold on. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here on that. Okay, Hello, yes. You're suggesting that the people get together. Right. And each person do a little section of the road in front of their house. Correct. Yes, the, his, his house. Because all this time, we're trusting and paying taxes depending on those people who are in charge, the KSAC, if that's the st same thing that's still going on. Uh -huh. And nothing has I, been I done. I don't think the KSAC right. receives much of the money. And it isn't the... Well, in the Notre Bay, um, it, it may well be the park roads. But outside of the, the main roads um, are, um, are central government roads. Right, uh -huh. but even it's the main road, okay, the Washington main Washington. road that comes in from Kingston, yes, it is very deplorable. Yes, okay, and then there are housing schemes that are built that has some wealthy houses that you know people need to get together, and if they do that, then something will be done. Also, another situation. You mean if hold on, uh huh, if the people get together. And each person does um, fixes the road in front of his house. Then you say something will be done. Correct. Why? Because guess what? It's like a block watch. Okay. Uh -huh. Each if we have six houses on the block, we take care of those the that portion. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then the other set that's on the other block picks up from there. Yes. You know, it, it's for your own benefit also. No, You're Mom, taking look here. care of your cars will be safer. Uh -huh. You wouldn't have to be paying so much money for wear and tear. Uh -huh. And stuff like that. Uh -huh. And, you know, this has really been going on. You know, I've left here over 20 years now. And it's the same thing I'm hearing. I know that you have offered suggestions that have been very good. But it seems like everybody just looks for themselves. Nobody cares. There's not that community. But look here, Mom. That sounds to me like paying a contractor 
to fix my roof. Right? And then going up and fixing it myself. Well, it's going to fit the contractor who has to drive to come to fix my roof. Uh-huh. It's going to benefit the carpenter who is going to come and fix my neighbor's fence uh-huh. or the side of the house or something like that. No, no, like no, no. But, but the point is that we are paying taxes to the government. Why are we paying taxes to the government? Well, that's what I'm saying. We have been paying taxes and nothing has been done. Then we must do something about that. Right. Don't pay no taxes. Block well, the roads. And well, we I don't have know. To do um, something. But, but it seems to me that that is where the problem is. Where? The people of this country are paying taxes to the government. Uh huh. The government has certain responsibilities in relation to the use of those taxes. Uh Uh-huh. It is to maintain a good road system. Right. Right? Right. That people can move about freely on. It is to maintain hospitals and schools and and so on, uh, security service. Correct. Which of these things is it doing adequately? It doesn't seem as if they are doing anything adequately. Then something is wrong there, man. We must deal with that. Right? You can't go on paying the taxes to have the roads done and then turn around and doing it ourselves at further expense. Well, you know, Mr. Perkins, I may go to jail, but then I'm not going to pay the taxes. And I am going to make sure that I get it done. I'm going to go to... um, Prime Minister Simpson Miller's house, uh-huh. and I'm going to do some kind of demonstration oh. because I'm sure the road to her house is well paved. I, I, yes, they probably are well paved, and she has security, ma'am, that will prevent That's any right. I'm not going to go into her property, uh-huh. which is my property, because I'm paying taxes for her to be there. Well, I don't okay? know. Okay, so. She can't come out because I'm going to make sure that she hears what I'm saying and get something going. Just like the citizens last night in the other town well, that blocked the road. But I was noticing on the on one of those um, uh, f- items last night on one of the television stations uh-huh. uh, where they had they had pictures of some vehicles driving on a road including a truck and the truck was the, the vehicles are all bumping up and down right. right and it struck me that that truck must have been empty it couldn't have it no. couldn't have any good any heavy load of goods in it or or it wouldn't have any springs by the time it was done on that road right but you know what then we will form a human fence yes well the I don't know. Will not I don't drive know. Over us. I don't know that that is the approach to take. I mean, but you you, you will know, agree, Mr. Perkins, that we have to try something. We have to try do something. Right. But we, we have a political voice in this country, Mum. Right. Ah, we must yes, dis- we do. But it's over the years. It doesn't seem. We need to insist. They're, that, they're not there for me. They're there for themselves. Then, then who put them there to be Kick there for them themselves? Kick them behind out. Eh? Kick them behind out. It's yes. What? You know, but we need to have some proactiveness going on. And if the people would only sit and think about, you know, what am I getting out of this? Yes. I'm paying John Brown to do a job. Yes. And he's not doing it. And giving him the money to do it. Right. And he's not doing the job. Right. Right? Kick him but out. But he's driving around in a spanky looking... um Benz or whatever. Whatever. And he's traveling abroad and, mm-hmm. you know, enjoying himself. Um... And uh, living well, you know, and all this kind of thing. Oh, Lord, I just don't know what's going on. But, you know, Mr. Perkins, I just wanted to let that be known, that I'm sick and tired of it, that each year I come, it's the same old story. It's redundant. Uh 
it is redundant. Not just the road to St. Mary and not to Bay. I go to Portland, it's the same thing. I go to Clarendon, it's the same thing. Uh -huh. We need to be active now. We need to let the people do the job that we're paying them to do. Well, and we I'm need going to, to leave that you they because it, yeah. guess what? Right, One suggestion I would say to you, sir, is if you could limit the callers, you know, let them know, look, there are others because I've been holding on for an hour just to let my, you know, opinions be made over the air. Yes, ma'am. But there are some other people holding on now. Right. So you have a blessed day. All right, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. All the bye best bye. to you. Hello? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning to you. Mr. How are you? Hello? Yes, morning. Happy New Year, Mr. Perkins. Oh, thank you very much, and the same yes, to you. first time for the year. Assuming that it is possible to have a new, happy New Year in this country. Are you yes. planning to migrate? I would love to, but you know, the U.S. embassy is still, they won't give it a visa. Oh, is that so? <laughs> oh, Lord. If you don't have a big name or whatever, you're not likely if to If you don't have what? A big name. Ah, yes. Yes, a well-known name uh -huh. or well-known people behind you. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, I have one question for you. Uh-huh. What are we going to do about Jamaica crime? About crime in Jamaica? Yes. Well, we need to do something about it. Yes. But the question is what? Yes, that is the question. What? Yes. Because in, in Montego Bay, five, six persons dead by the day. Yes. Well, it's a good thing. It's kind of ease off of Kingston because I'm from Kingston. Uh -huh. But it's still Jamaica and it's getting worse every day. Yes. And I'm just 19 and I am not sure that I will see tomorrow morning. <laughs> the crime in Jamaica. That is yes. very bad. That is the way things are in Jamaica. But look here. Part of the problem, it seems to me, is that those who are in charge do not have a clue what to do about it. I would agree with you. 100%. And the second thing is that they are, their approach is totally wrong. Right? They the seem to believe, and the approach of a lot of other people in this country to the crime problem, seems to be... Hello? Hello? Yes, that the problem is a police problem, a policing problem, right? That all you have to do is get enough policemen out there with enough uh, bulletproof vests and uh, enough big guns and well-armed, well-supplied with ammunition, right? Mm -hmm. And vehicles and fingerprint systems and whatever, right? And that is going to be put an end to the crime. But Mr. Perkins, and that approach has not worked over all the time that they've been trying it. But Mr. Perkins, that won't work if it's the same big eyes that get giving the police the gun, giving the criminal the gun. Well, <laughs> that, that well, I don't work. know. I don't know whether whether it's the the same people that are doing it. But they, look here, Mum. The the basic problem in Jamaica, you see. Mm -hmm. is that people that we, have, we say that we have been governing ourselves since 1962 when we yes. became independent All right. we set up a constitution and we, well I mean, not we the, the British? the party people oh, okay. got together and did a constitution and we, we have a government and we have various systems Right? What we have not done is to provide our people with, well, first of all, we haven't, we haven't really sat down mm -hmm. and thought about what we meant by governing ourselves. Hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you, Mom. Yes, Mr. Perkins. We, yes, I was saying that we have not settled in our minds what we mean by government. Right? Right. And what is the purpose of government? Why do we have a government? Yes, Mr. Perkins, it, why do we have a government? Eh? Why do we have a government? Because it, it is like we're governing ourselves, like we don't have a leader. Well, I don't know that we're governing ourselves. Um... 
it doesn't seem to me that there is much in the way of government going on because this in this country it is pure anarchy right yes and to my way of thinking the best definition of government that i know of was provided by thomas jefferson by in the who? declaration of independence of the united states okay we hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights among them the right to life to liberty and to the pursuit of happiness and that it is to secure these rights that governments are instituted among men now is it possible to believe that the government of jamaica really sees itself as existing to secure for the people of this country the right to life to f- liberty and freedom. to pathways that allow them access to happiness i don't think so and i'm not working that is the fundamental problem mom. and if people see themselves if people feel insecure think that other men are might come to to shoot them at night what do they do when that happens call the police the police go and tell them that they don't have gas to put in the car exactly right? or they don't have any cars at the station or they don't have no car at the station so just prepare yourself to get into the car so mr park right with all that said so so the so hold on a little bit so the people in these areas organize their own ways of protecting themselves yes right? that was the point i was and some with. of them many of them are illegal because the government is saying to them we are not going to allow you to have a gun to to defend yourself right we can't defend you but we are telling you 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 not going to have a gun to defend yourself or that there are other people who may have guns to defend themselves but we're not allowing you to have a gun to defend yourself so what happened well i the man i the prepares to sit down and die and be killed or him go and do something illegal in order to defend himself and his family right i think they should legalize firearms in this country then well i don't know but the the other thing is that many other, in many in in many areas they have systems led by dons right who are themselves using criminal means to defend their communities right yes mr parkin the people need some order and security in which to live the government of jamaica is not providing that order and security therefore they organize it for themselves along lines that are not necessarily legal, lawful right then people need to earn the means of survival right yes, people sir. want to live that is so true to live you must eat yes and you must eat, consume you must have earning right now if there are no jobs available for people if they have no training should those jobs be available if in other words the educational system is inadequate right then what do they do well mr parkin if they can't go out there get a job earn a decent living to sustain themselves and their children what do they do they go the legal route exactly right that yeah, is no the basis way. of of crime in this what is called crime in this country and the police can't stop that right what what has to happen it is a complex issue an issue that is not going to be solved by catching up one man and locking him up right or any number of men and locking them up it not going to work that way and you know what you look at the murder figures now right the police the the report, statistical reports tell you that of of 
of a hundred murders committed in Jamaica, only about 30 are cleared up. Mm -hmm. Right? What does cleared up mean? It may mean that the police shot a man last night. And you hear that that man was wanted, was wanted. for 10 murders. Mm -hmm. So 10 murders are cleared up. Mm -hmm. But there is no proof that that, man did that, that that is the man that said so that the man who committed those murders may very well be out there walking around. Committing more right? murders. Eh? Committing more murders. Yes. And in any event, only about 30% of the murders committed in Jamaica in a year are cleared up, right? So 70% uh, of the murderers are walking free. Mr. Perkins, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it St. Kitts or St. Lucia? They had a national emergency because they had 27 murder in the year, in 2006. I, uh, 2006? 2006. I think it, which one, which two you said? St. Lucia. I am not sure. No, St. Lucia had an election. Um, I, I don't think that they had... I, I can't remember. I, I, I can't remember. Yes, but, Mr. Perkins. But, but, look at but that, there, was, Mr. Perkins. there was some country that had about 25 or 27 murders yes. for the year. And they are, it's, it's a big thing in their country, and it's 27 yes. for the year, and yes. they're having a thousand add. Yes. And it's just a normal day for us. This country, mom, is dissolving into anarchy. Right? And it, it, the, the, the approaches that are being taken by the government to it cannot work. Mr. Perkins. Right? I think that Miss Lucretia, Portia Simpson Miller. Portia Lucretia. Lucretia. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Portia Simpson Miller should take a stand because obviously from the current Prime Minister last year, when it comes to female okay that is a very good thing because she's representing for the females but mr mr perkins there are a lot more important things than just being a representative for the females and i am a female she needs to do more for the country for the crime more schools she's talking about school but i've not seen anything happening yes she needs to do more mr mr perkins i have a question again I heard last night on the news that there is a certain South American country that is backing the the, the um the government. Yes, so Mr. Golding said. Oh well, it's, oh, it's a hearsay then. Okay, eh? so is it? Well, no, I don't I, know if it's hearsay. I don't think well, that is, that is a liner, Mr. Perkins. Eh? I don't think that is a liner because obviously most of Summer is getting his information from to come up with such an assumption. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Well, he, 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 Mr. Golding said it. Um, Mr. Buchanan has denied it. Yes. But then Mr. Golding said Trafigura. And the government... Denied it also? Said, well, denied that there was any wrongdoing. But and then the minister true. resigned and Sister P said they must give back the money and they haven't yet given it back. And, you know, the Dutch Mr. government Parkin. is investigating it Mr. and all Parkin. sorts of things. If the People's National Party had to take $31 million, uh -huh. not in a brown paper bag, as Mr. Omar Davis said, mm -hmm. you think that they can find it to give back to Figura? <laughs> if that well, they have, uh, uh, well apparently they haven't yet found it to send back to Traffic That's Europe. obvious. Well, we need some new leaders, fresh people, completely. Everybody in, in Parliament completely just wash out every inequity in there and get some fresh young individual who have a mind to help Jamaica not only help their pocket make sure their families are okay the entire Jamaica because we need that in Jamaica and some people because she's a because our prime minister our prime minister is a female look here excited, but that is unfair get get getting men or getting women or getting young people or is not going to be the solution of the problem, right? What is going to be? What we want are people who, persons who are capable of doing the job. If you want somebody to build a house for you, or somebody to repair your car, yes, or somebody to make 
your dresses or whatever. You don't go looking for people, for persons who are either men or women or old or young. Right? Yes, Mr. Bernstein. You go looking for persons who, who can, can do, do the, the job. job. Yes. That is so true. Right? A. B. Where the, biz so the, the, the business of men or women is irrelevant. Right? A good prime minister could be either a man or a woman. That is true. Right? But the fact that it is a man doesn't guarantee that he's going to do a good job, as we well know in this country. Yes, we do. Nor does the fact that it is a woman or she's a woman mm -hmm. going to going to um, going to guarantee that. Right? That's absolute nonsense. What you need is a person who can do the job. It now, as far as youth and age are concerned, right? Youth throughout human history, the progress of mankind has heavily depended upon the ability of the human being to transmit um, information and uh, patterns of uh, policies, patterns of behaviors and whatever from the accumulated experience of the old. The people throughout their lives, right, accumulate experience. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. Mr. And, Mr. and knowledge yes. and so on, right? And the, the father or the people of older generation pass on that information to the young, to the youth coming up, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and enable the youth to start not at the same scratch line that they started at, but at a line much beyond where they started. You follow me? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Now, so don't, don't reject people on, don't, don't say that what we need is some 18 year olds okay. in parliament, <laughs> right? Um, what we need are persons of experience, right? Who can make the appropriate judgments? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Right, and who can formulate policies and carry out actions that will be beneficial to this country. And the other thing that we have as a problem in Jamaica is a tendency to be loyal to a party and its color. Right? To want to vote PNP or GLP. Not because one expects that, that that is the party that is going to do the job that Jamaica needs to have done and do it well. Right? But because down to the very foul in a meyard of PNP. <laughs> That's a load of rubbish. Right? Mr. Perkins, it, is, it, it exhibits a lack of intelligence. What we need is to vote for Jamaica because that is where we live. Mr. Perkins, we eh? need a lot of things in Jamaica. I beg your pardon? We need a lot of things in Jamaica. Yes, ma'am. But we need to start now. We need to focus on the crime because it is getting... A matter of fact, it is already completely and totally out of hand. Yes. So we need to try and start even gripping back on it because... Trust me, Mr. Perkins, it's stressing, especially when you have to leave work, go, home, go sit in the traffic, in a bus, reach home, walk up the avenue. Anything can happen, no, Mr. Perkins, because... Yeah. Everything. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello? 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 Yes, Mr. Perkins, I'm here. I'm not hearing you. Hello? Hello? Yes? Are you hearing Mr. Perkins? Yes, uh-huh. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Also, Mr. Perkins. Hello? Yes, yes. Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. 
The high school children that just leave high school, what are they going to do? Because there's no job available yes. if you're not doing something for yourself or uh -huh. something illegal. Well, that's part of what we were talking about a while ago, Mum. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Right? People are going to be induced, a lot of youngsters are going to be induced into crime yes, for lack of opportunity elsewhere. <laughs> right? And then we think that the way to deal with that is to impose severe, extreme and resolute measures. Absolute nonsense will not work. Mr. Perkins, I heard the commissioner of police say the other day that they have information that um, gunmen have been thrown up on guns. <laughs> Did you hear that, Mr. Perkins? But if the, if the, if the commissioner of police has that information, Mum, why does he need to come out and make speeches about it? I rest my why doesn't he need to? Why doesn't he go have his carry out an investigation, discover where these guns are, and who it is that has them there, and lock them up? Mr. Perkins, and I could have said it better myself. Eh? I could have said it better. Yes. <laughs> well, Mr. Perkins, thank you very much. Okay, nice this hearing is the from first you. Time on your program. Thank you very much. Okay. And you must call again. Okay, I will. Okay. Uh, hello? Hello? Mr. Perkins? Yes, sir, good afternoon. Well, oh, why do I keep saying good afternoon? Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh -huh. I'm surprised I got you so quick. I beg your pardon? I'm surprised I got you so quick. I just picked up the phone to call you and... Oops, I'm on. Anyway. Oops, oops the power gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go do ahead. Do you believe man evolved from apes or from the monkey family? If what? Man. Evolved from the apes. From the apes? Yeah, the monkey family. Um, well, I, I, I'm not sure that that is the way I would put it. Um, yeah. I suspect that what has been said yes. is that that yes, man evolved, and at one point um, in the process of evolution, yes, um, his characteristics were. Rather like those of the apes, um, right, right. But I, I, and maybe, um, maybe I, I think that what happened is that um, that the the man and the apes yes. may have evolved from the from the same um, may may have common ancestors with the with the ape or the monkeys. Eh? You mean with the ape? With ape family? A apes, monkeys, I don't know which. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I, I don't share that, that view, you know. I know it's a popular view with the evolutionists. Yeah. But um, from a physical point of view, I, I know that mankind shares some resemblance of the primate or the, or the monkey. Mm -hmm. But I think man is distinctively of his own kind. I think m man belongs yes, but, but to... Yes, but hold on a little bit. Yeah. Um... The biblical notion yes. that man was created just as he is today, uh -huh. and when he arrived in the Garden of Eden, he looked like um, exactly like you know human beings. Um, he had the form today. of a man. Eh? He had the form of a man. Yes. Well, that's not valid. No, I can understand you know. Yes. Man, man evolved. Huh? Man evolved. Yes, and that, and that I can understand the, the hair though, mm -hmm. as far as this assumption of the evolutionist is, is, is concerned in mm -hmm. regard to the physical origin of man. You see, the evolutionists believe that at one point in time, just like you said earlier, that the physical evolution of man was once um, covered, uh, uh, the physical development of man himself was Hold once on, sir. covered. I think, that the, I think that evolution yes. is beyond question at this point. Okay. Right? There's no question. But that, that, that not just man, yes. but everything in the world yes. has gone through a process of evolution. So uh, the, the idea of man thing. being covered completely with hair, body hair, yes. is, is in a way, it's correct. But there are people in this world today. That still so. have a whole lot of body hair on them. <laughs> what? There are still people in this world that has a lot of... A hell of a lot of body hair on yes. them. Yes. Everybody um, has body hair. But it, at some point in time, though, you know, Mr. Perkins, mm -hmm. man began to lose that body hair. And, and I'm wondering exactly when, at what point in time, 
did he start losing this hair on his body? Using what? Losing the hair uh -huh. on his body at what yeah. time? Well, I don't know. Over, it's been a long time, the process, evolution has been a long process, yes. long time going on, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I think it began, though, with the birth of man from the womb of the woman. Uh, birth of man from the womb of what? From the womb of the woman. Yeah. I think it began there. But most, most, all animals, so. yes. <coughs> all um, mammals um, are born from the womb of females. Yes. Mm, well. But yeah, um, but that is not to say that the the, um, the origin of all living creatures is somewhat related to sex. It, it related to what? Sex. Well, I, which living creature? All living creatures are their their existence is related to sex, sir. Yeah, the continuity, including plants. The continuity of their existence mm. is related to sex, but the origin of their existence. Has well, certain the plants that are born from well, um, from seeds, you know. Was born from what? Seeds, plants that sex has to do with the with the. With all living creatures? Yes. As, I, as far as I know. But um, that is only to... Con to, to Including plants. Um, to continue the genes. Anyway, what is the point you want to make? Anyway, I was just um, saying that there is a little truth to this whole thing of evolution, it's enough, but it, 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 the problem is the evolution... It's is not a little truth, sir, it's a big truth. A lot of truth. But the problem with the evolutionists and the creationists is that they cannot see high to high. But the whole idea of creating man was in the form of a slow evolutionary process. And I think until um, man can realize this, especially the evolutionists and the religionists, mm -hmm. that um, there is truth to both sides of the story. Look here, sir. Yes. Yeah. The book of Genesis, you see? Yes. In the Bible. is not a scientific document. Right? Uh-huh. Nor is it a historical document in the sense of you know what it contains being accurate a historical record right it is an attempt by man yes to explain the circumstances in which he finds himself right yes and um, we have gone based upon his own observation his observations and his what he knew about um, life at the time. Uh -huh. uh, we have gone beyond that, right? Science has made all sorts of discoveries that were not available to whoever it was that wrote them. But you have to bear in mind you know, that man was also created in the image and likeness of God, which is the only... That, um, is, what, that is what the, the writer Bible of the says. book of Genesis said. But, um, and he may well be, be, be right. And in, in fact, my own view is that he is right. Okay. But right. Mr. President, what do you make of Jesus? Of what? Huh? Make of what? Jesus. What do I make of him? Yes. Yeah. Um, meaning what? Well, I know a lot of people are not going to believe this, you know, mm -hmm. particularly the Jews and the Muslims. But the birth of Jesus to me represents uh, another revolution or another phase of evolution in mm. the life of man. Is that so? Yes. The birth of Jesus, which is a man born of the Spirit, is the epitome of what man is supposed to become. Uh -huh. Now, man has been evolving now for a very long time. Mm -hmm. In fact, man has been evolving from the very moment he was conceived in the water. Now, at some point in time, I believe this, this stage of evolution, this form of evolution, must come to an end. Oh, and I think why? This, yeah? Why? Because it, it, it is not an everlasting thing. There must be some reason behind it. <laughs> some definite purpose. Yes, sir, but I, I don't know. I don't know about that part of it, you know? Yes. I don't know. But I believe, though, that the coming of Jesus into the world of man is to transform the mortal man into the immortal man. 
Jesus came to enlighten and awaken the living soul uh -huh. in the man and to take away the sting of death uh -huh. so that man can live in abundance in heaven. And frankly, neither, the, neither Moses nor Mohammed can make such a heavenly claim. Uh -huh. That is what you believe. Well, that is what Jesus says too. Uh, oh, yes. All right. Well. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Perkins, take it easy. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that just about brings us to news time. We'll be back here in about 20 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. And uh, we go now directly to our telephone. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Perkins. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh -huh. Just want to give you a quick information concerning a shooting of a, of a street person last night by a policeman in the Three Miles area. Mm -hmm. This person is somebody that most drivers on the road from between Maxfield Avenue or Three Miles area knows him. Which person? I will say to anybody that is never a violent person. Yes. And only last night around 8.30 there about. Why, do, uh, why does everybody who drives on that road know him? Because he's always on the street, Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. He's always on the street and begging. And he will come, he will not get too close to you that you want him to even have to bump up. And when I say everybody knows him around three miles here, everybody knows him. How old was he? I would say he's probably about 40 years old. Somewhere there, he got between his 38, 40. I mean, he's somebody known to be on to be a police too. Yes. Because... You know, there's argument, oh, that even the police from that era is, is very much upset about the shooting of this man. So what was it that happened? From what, was, from, what, from what I heard is that he was begging some money and the policeman claimed that he told him that he didn't have any and he attacked him with a knife. And we're saying, Mr. Berg, if, if, if the man attacked him, the man is, is not dirty, dirty state, you know. Shoot him nine and then the man are in foot. I fire one shot and run him away now. And if anybody is well, listening to this, you know, he'll sir, kill you. If, if a man is coming at you with a weapon to kill you, maybe it would be a good thing to shoot him in his hand. But it, that isn't easy. Right? Yeah. And if you're really defending your life, then you have to make sure that you, you hit. You may not have more than one shot. Well, that is no. as to whether... The, the story that was told is is correct. I don't know. Yes. But I mean, um, neither do you. Neither do I. But but the, the, what what I can be assured of, and what many other people can be assured about, sir, that this man is never yet seen to be in any way violent. Never, never, Mister Perkins. Yes, but um, but the fact that he has never been violent, he had never been violent before last night. Does not yes. mean that he wasn't violent last night. No, uh, could be true, right? Sir. Yes, could be true. W w you know what our problem here is? Yes, sir. That we do not have, and this is not the fault of that policeman. It's a fault of the government of Jamaica and the people of Jamaica who have not insisted upon it. Yeah. We do not have an adequate investigative system to take charge of an issue of an issue like this one yes, right sir. and to investigate and to produce a result that is credible and acceptable to the jamaican people yeah right that is our problem right yeah we, we at this point we cannot say that that policeman murdered yeah. the man on the other hand we cannot say that that policeman shot the man in thwarting off an attack, right? Yes. What we, need, what we need to have is an investigative system independent of the police, right? Yes. To go into matters in which the police are involved like this, to investigate them thoroughly and honestly, and to produce a result that we find acceptable. And if we had that, we would now be talking about this. We we would be confident that that is going to happen. Okay? Yes, Mr. President. Uh -huh. You have anything else to say about it? 
Sir? You have something else to say about it? Y yes, I will just say oh, that I will... Oh, hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here on land. Yes, sir. Yes, as, just to conclude here, sir, as I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that somebody, somebody from the authority body will investigate this matter anyhow. <laughs> Although he's a street person and justice will be served. Uh -huh. And I, I'm, if anybody else is listening out there, maybe just call you up and, and to confirm what I'm saying to you about this person. Uh -huh. You know? Nobody yes, can ever say they ever seen this woman walking with, without sharp implement or anything like that. Uh -huh. So it, 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 it is unbelievable when, when the policeman came out last night showing a knife to say that it was what the man had. Because we have never seen him walking with a, any form of cutting tool. Well, that is not proof that he didn't have a cutting tool last night. Right? As I yes. say. Yes, what sir. we need is to have a proper system in place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the government of Jamaica has not seen, seen fit to... to to ensure that, yeah. and to ensure that where the police shoot persons, um, justice is done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. That does not happen in Jamaica. Yeah. Okay? Okay, Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. Thanks much. So the, the police might, there may be policemen who's, who feel that they are free to shoot because they could, they're sure they will get away with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right? Okay, Mr. Virgin. Uh -huh. Thanks, George. Uh, hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. I am living in Greendale, is it, sir? Green Bay. Greendale in Spanish Town. And where? Spanish Town. Greendale in Spanish Town. Greenville. Oh, yeah. Greendale, D A L E. Uh -huh. I thought for a moment you said Green Bay. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, from last week, I noticed I saw a group of people. There's a broad road. That, um, it, it, the name of it is Greendale Boulevard. Uh -huh. And I saw a group of people over a manhole. Now there are two places that take the rainwater, and one of them is open right now. It could be a child that are dropping it, or a person could come on at night, don't realize, and the car go right down in that hole. It's in the middle of the road. Middle of the road, sir. A hole? A hole. Uncovered? Uncovered, sir. <laughs> and I've been trying to see if I could get um, the NS, um, the NWA number in Spanish town to tell them about it. This morning I'm passing down the road. The goat is still in the hole. A goat? A goat dropped in there. And if he should die down there, all of us are on it. There's two um, restaurants close by. Well, in between that, the hole. The hole is in between two restaurants. And if that goat should die in there, you know what happened with the stinkness. Because right now I am suffering from the stinkness from that place. Because um, apparently sewer water coming from some place. And so why have no, uh, um, somebody not? Why has somebody not been able to to? Arranged to have the goat lifted out of the... Well, some boat. guys was there, but they couldn't get off. The, where he is now is where the grill is now. There is grill. You know, he walked down apparently and is right where the grill is. But the, these guys don't have the wear it all to take up this heavy grill yes, and get him but out. Yes, but um, he must be hungry down there now. Exactly so, and that is what I'm saying. If he so therefore, down there, if somebody goes and with a few blades of grass, right... And holds it up by the hole. No, he's not by the open hole now, you know. Uh -huh. He's where the grill now is, because apparently he dropped, he fell in and was walking. Yes, all right. And came so down. all you have to do is is uh, put the grass against the, the grill, right? Yeah. And lead him down to the open part of the hole. No, you can't lead him, Mr. Perkins, Why? because he's under the road now. It's a storm drain, you know. Uh -huh. It is a storm drain. I see. So this place is open. He fell in it and apparently walked down or the dirty water carried him down and he's stuck now right where the grill is. Uh -huh. So it need like the public works or the whatever they call them now to open that place and get him out. Yes. And he's there from last week. I mean, I don't know what is happening, Mr. Perkins. If you ever see the state of Greendale Road, I am living here for 39 years. And from Mr. Henry Kitts, did up every street in Greendale and left it to parish councillor or whoever is responsible. Until now, nobody 
ever paved those road right through. You have a ring road from Pansiana Drive, go up and Stratford Drive, come on and Content Drive, and even Content Drive um, is, is deteriorating you now because the elites live up on the hill, you know, in St. Jago Heights, uh-huh. and there's a, <laughs> there's a road named Lakeland Drive. When the rain falls and it comes down on Devon Road, the water at the corner can almost reach at your, your knee. I mean, it's a disgrace. And our MP, the first one, Hedda Robinson, said that she didn't get any vote in Greenville, not even six. And I assure my house give her a six vote at a time. Uh-huh. Now she's gone. This one now. He's saying the same. She don't get any vote in Greenville, so she's not fixing Greenville Road. I mean, why these people don't get, issue the money with PNP and GLP mark on it? That when you go and pay your taxes... You know, yes. they can see how much PNP money put on and how much jail you, money you know, the taxes. That and every year that they raise the taxes. The, 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 there is so much corruption in Jamaica. You understand? Right? People it's are not seeing... It's a disgrace. Seeing, eh? It's a disgrace to see Green Deal. Yes. The bushes, the lots, the, 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 <laughs> the, the farm, some of them almost farm um, Arch with Kasha. All on Selburn Road. A little school is on there when the rain falls. Nowhere for the children to walk. Uh-huh. I walk up there one day with my grandson. And I was edging the, the side because rain had fallen about two days before. And I thought I was safe. My foot go right down in pure water. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Greendale. Greendale don't have no representative. We don't have any, any um, councillor. And we don't have any MP. I mean, up where she idolized, the road is paid from the, the main, go straight in. And Green Deal, that is paying taxes. Every year, your taxes raise, because up the last year, they raised it from $2,000 to $4,000 yes. on lift up, and mm-hmm. nothing is being done. Down on Content Drive, they cleaned the drain from last year. Early last year, or from the Christmas before last, uh-huh. um, year before last. And come on content drive right now. All the rubble and everything is on the roadside. Same way, washed down back in the same drain. They raised the taxes last year? Yeah, they raised it, they raised it three years straight. Eh? Three Two years, years straight. straight? But wasn't it last year that Omar Davis told us? Last year when everybody go with them one to- with them two thousand dollar to pay taxes uh-huh. start raised to four thousand dollars. But didn't the minister tell us in parliament? Mm, that is what No he new taxes? Mm, well uh, unless uh, um the um where you call it? The, the people at the tax office are take the money then. <laughs> Can you go with two thousand and tell you no your your tax is four thousand dollars? I think I remember the minister saying no new taxes. Mr. Perkins, it's a disgrace in Greendale. Right now we have three lights, four lights out on the road here. And the, 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 um, I know for sure that two of them is out for more than two years now. Uh-huh. And nobody put a bulb in them. So I don't know what is going on in Greendale. Greendale has no representative. And when he said that, me don't make no oh, apology. You, mean, um, to share do, you don't have a parish councillor? Yeah, but we don't, we don't know, we don't know the, um, the councillor. I oh, mean, you don't know him? It, we only know the name. His name's Scott. What Scott, me don't even know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but we know the same name, Scott. But we don't know him. One time he see him at the community meeting. When we go one uh-huh. time he see him. And, and who is the MP? Sharon Hay Webster. Oh? Mm, you see, over here is mostly old people that can be 60 odd. You are what? 60 odd. Oh, as you sounded like a little girl. Exactly so. I'm a lot of old people. Where my mother live, there's a lot there that is down in a hole, and when the rain falls, the water settling on the lot, it can't run off on the street, and it even damaging her house. Uh-huh. Now, who you talk to, to about things like that? So it's mostly elderly people from England come home, and those that never travel, but them get elderly now. They are, we are the people that live over here, uh-huh. right? So we don't really have no time to go lift up the gun for nobody and go walk up and down and canvas. You see what I mean? Yes. We have to look about we. And we don't have anybody, and yet we are paying the taxes, and we don't have no road. Mr. Perkins, when rain falls in a green deal, is a sin. There's the water on the road. Oh, gosh. We, me, me mean, just say you don't have any asphalt on the roads again, you know. No, no asphalt. asphalt. Don't leave on the roads again. Lakeland Drive, Palace Road, have a little bit of asphalt. Um, Dover Road, Devon Road, Greendale Boulevard, Essex Drive, 
Can't they drive gun back, you know? Well, I, well, I, I saw Mr. Benny White on television last night. The the mayor of Port Antonio. Mm -hmm. um, saying that there was no asphalt in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he meant. 30 odd years now, no, no, then Jamaica for Green Deal. 30 odd years. I don't know what he meant. I live here for 39 years. Um, maybe I suppose that the, um, the government hasn't got the money to buy, buy the asphalt. <laughs> Why, Mr. Perkins, what, um, the major thing right now is this goat. We need him to come out, so I'm only hoping that somebody at home... Wait, you don't know? Who is the owner of the goat? No, we don't know. We don't know. Uh -huh. We don't know. You see, animals walk up and down, well, chiefly goats. Yes. Walk up and down in this area, because yes. so much open land, they go and they feed and whatever. But in whatever. any event, I mean, it would seem to me to be the responsibility of the, of the authorities. Of course. To get to, him out, to, because um, if the guys could get him out, yes, that that saw that heard him at first when he fell in, they would yes. have taken him out. But he was by the hole anymore. He was by the grid between um, Avon Avenue and Greendale Boulevard. That is oh. between two restaurants, Channel uh -huh. Five and Herbie's Restaurant. Uh -huh. You see, so if those guys at the betting shop could get him out, they would have taken him out. Yes. I thought he was dead, or somebody had taken him out. Uh -huh. It's only this morning I going on the road and I found out that the goat was still in there crying. Is here I hear this. So now when I stop over there, I say, my God, the goat is still down in there. So if he should die from hunger, or we manage on the It's going to be a stink. Of course. So I'm only hoping that somebody, um, that, you know, have some authority over those things, would just come along and get him out. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, I don't know, I don't know. It really hard rending to see what's going on around you. But uh, it, what is it? A parish council road? Yeah, it's it's a scheme, you know. Uh -huh. Greendale is a scheme. This is just before you reach a hospital. Yes. On your right, before you turn off on the Slagoville Road. That's oh. that scheme. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see. So I would I presume that it's a parish council concern. Uh huh. But they don't business with us, my dear sir. No business at all with nothing happening in green. Well, have you, have you tried to speak to the mayor about it? Well, no. Or I am, to the I am secretary planning of the parish a demonstration. Eh? I am planning a demonstration. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, before you, before you do the demonstration, talk to the secretary of the council and hear what they have to say. Okay. Okay? Okay, sir. Uh-huh. I have a good day. And I, yes, it would seem to me that that they would be the people having the responsibility for it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. when I say about the demonstration, I hope somebody is listening to tell them that Greendale people, we the old people are Greendale, uh -huh. planning to demonstrate on them. I see. So we're going to go to the police and get the permit and everything. We have to demonstrate for the road. It can't stay. Uh -huh. Oh, you're, you're going to the police to get a... De uh, we have to get the permit. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hope... Uh, Mr. President, let me tell you, it no, it no matter about talking to no secretary or anything, they well know how Green Deal is. What I'm saying, uh -huh. the MP. No, we're talking about the goat now. Eh? We're talking about the goat, oh, Well, it. the goat, um, you mean get to, get on to the parish council and yes, they can uh, when they yes. about it? Okay. You know? Yeah, well, all right, I'll go and try that right uh -huh. away. Okay. I'll find the number and, and get it. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, all the first best I'm you. calling to you. Okay, let me know what happens. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here. Hello? Hello? Okay, thank you very much. We're back here. Hello? 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 Yes, Mr. Perkins? Yes, sir. Dr. Turner from JSPCA. From? JSPCA. J.S. Jamaica Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Oh, yes, yes. I heard about an incident a while ago with some goat. About the goat, yes. Yes, um, I didn't hear the full thing. I just... It's a place called Greenvale in uh -huh. Spanish town. Yes. A goat apparently fell into an open drainage hole. Right. In the middle of the road. Right. Uncovered. Uh-huh. Right. And has been there since sometime last week. Right. And um, I, it, it, nobody, um, nobody has, has... But they have failed to contact JSPC because we have done calls out in and out of Spanish Town. And once JSPC is contacted about an incident, that we respond immediately. Uh-huh. 
You will respond to it immediately. Immediately, once, once in at all, we we heard about it from the day we hear about it. Our ambulance will be out there, and we never stop. Even just the other day, a, a puppy went to the drain, and the fire engine had to come and assist us. Uh-huh. You know, we do everything possible. Yes. We had an incident where a cow fell inside a um, uh, a culvert. Yes. And we had to get Zuki's trucking crane uh-huh. to lift it out. You know, How is that so? We do every possible thing to uh-huh. assist animals oh, very that are in danger. Uh-huh. Or, or in any problem. That is the work of JSPC. So, what, what okay. Um, would you have a number that you'd like? Because I, I, I hope that that lady is, is listening. Uh-huh. And um, perhaps could, could give you a call. Yes, the numbers are 929-4095. What is the number? Nine two nine nine two nine four zero nine five four zero nine five or nine two nine hold on yes zero three two zero zero three three two zero two zero and the other one was and uh, the first one is nine two nine yes. four zero nine five four zero nine five uh huh. And in case of emergency and JSPC um, numbers, uh, that means after working hours, uh-huh. they can contact my emergency number, 381. 381-3462. 381-3462. But in any event, sir. Yes. Uh-huh. In any event, this is going on at... Um, Greendale. Right. In Spanish Town. Right. Okay. So Greendale in Spanish Town. Yes, yeah, so if she does numb if and it is um it is as you enter Spanish Town. Right. As you're entering before you get to the hospital. On yes. the right, she says. Uh huh. Okay. On the right. Before, on the coming right. from what side? Coming from the town or coming from I imagine. Um, from um, the Mandela Highway. I think highway. it is coming from Kingston. Coming from I Kingston. I can't remember. I can't remember what Greendale. Um, that means that you go to the bridge. Yes. Right. Um. Anyhow, anyhow, it's it's in Spanish town. It, right. it's Before you turn, yes, it's before you turn on the road to Snigerville. Oh, before you turn on the road to Snigerville. Before you right. turn on the road to Snigerville. I want to get checked out immediately, yes, Mr. Yes. Burgess. Thanks so, um, perhaps you could you could look into the matter. All uh, right, immediately, okay. Mr. Perkins. Thank you very much. For You're most call. welcome. And we'll keep these numbers just in case we... All right, thank you very much. ...calls on, on such matters. Okay, uh, hello? Hello. 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 Hello, yes, good, good, good afternoon to you. Okay. You know, I was saying good morning earlier on. I, no, nearly. Uh, good afternoon earlier on. I nearly said good morning a while ago. Hello? Hello, Willie. Hi, how are you? Not bad. I haven't yeah. heard from you in a long time. Quite a while, at least two months. Eh? Must have got a long rest. Uh, from, a, from? At least two months. Uh-huh. I gather you have now changed around and are supporting Mr. Golding. In no way. What? In no way. I'm not talking no politics for now. You're not talking I'm politics now? I'm talking politics for now. There's more important things in Jamaica than politics. Oh, you have dropped po- politics from your agenda? Yeah. I have to ask you some questions. Go ahead. How come Mr. Stewart is back at NSWA? Well, they say that they've got him back to to um, help put out the fire. So, Willie, why are you asking these They don't seem to know how to put out the fire apart from that. There's nobody else in Jamaica who knows how to put fire, out a fire of that sort. But Mr. Stewart, right? But Mr. Stewart. So they have to have him back in the NSW. I cannot believe it. What? So what you're asking people to catch the man from, or you call him Vin Vin Lawrence, right? What? 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 No, no, hold on, I didn't get that. Why are you asking for investigations into the White House Hotel Uh and into the NSWA? And into the UDC. When we're going to catch them and give them job again? <laughs> well, I don't know. Catch them. I don't know about that. When I mean, we're say, hey, oh, you're investigating that thing, that something is wrong at that White House. Oh, maybe right? some. And may- all your investigations are leading that the UDC was not being run honestly. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, who resign, who don't resign? Who oh, hold cares? on a bit. 
the, this is why this must be why you must be talking like that to some people because somebody told me that you're now supporting Mr. Golding. You always hearing people telling you things. Huh? What are you, a dopey? No, no, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I. Um, I am not talking no politics this year. If I can help it, I don't. Well, how are you talking that. like that against your party? I'm talking against these men. What are we doing with these scandals if we know who do it? Yes. And we accuse that person, and it is accepted. The whole thing came from Patterson to begin with. Now don't tell me that he got a job back down there because he's pulling strings. Well, and remember, there was a a matter of two billion dollars overspent at um, NSWMA, I believe. Why are you telling me about it? You don't know about it. You know about it. Why are you telling me? Because if you found out who did it, nothing is going to happen to that person. Oh, is that so? Then you don't think so. Um, You think that what? There are other countries, like down in Trinidad, when they catch people do something back, they put them in the courts and they're on their way to jail. And other places, lots of other places. Uh But this place, it doesn't matter. But I so see that I see that down in Trinidad they they have a chief justice under arrest. I'm telling you, I can't believe it. They, you know why? Half Indian and half African, uh-huh. right? And I the see. Indians are more. So the Africans will lock up the Indians, and the, and the Indians, Indians will, will lock up, up the Africans, Africans, right? But here in Jamaica. We, we are, find we, out who do it. Eh? We know that him do it. And we say him do it. And him left the job. And then we send back and get him to come do the job again. Well, let's say he's the only person in Jamaica who can put out the fire. Oh, hogwash. We're wasting a lot of time in the parliament, in these investigative things, just for politics sake. When we all know, for Mr. Patterson came in Jamaica was pure scandal. Scandal, 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 scandal. And uh-huh. now every minute you see... But the scandals are still going on? But every time you look, you see the paper with somebody. Nobody can celebrate nothing unless he's there. Why well, does he go and retire somewhere? No, but the scandals are still going on. Of course. Yes. And if you catch who the scandal belongs to. Uh-huh. Right? What you do with it? Yeah. Anyway, I, I think that Sister P is going to is going to put an end to them pretty soon. Don't you think so? Stop being a joker, Willie. Uh, uh, stop being what? You're being a joker. A joker? It's not in her hands. But weren't you a strong Sister P supporter? I am. I love her to death, but it is not in her hands. Why is Mr. Patterson so dominant? What is not in her hands? To be able to make these laws and rules and everything. But she is the Prime Minister. Will you call that subject now? What? I'm a diabetic, right? You know that. Uh-huh. That I'm a diabetic? Yes. And I'm also a depressed person. A depressed person? That takes pills for depression. Uh-huh. But, uh, um... But Sister P must lift your spirits. Oh, you hell, you know, stop with that crap now. I listen to what I'm telling you. Two weeks ago, I had my little machine. I paid about 3000 for one touch. There were no slips, little things you insert in the machine on the island. Oh, yes? Right? Every diabetic person can have to throw away the little machine. When you call to Lasco, you hear it's Johnson & Johnson. When you hear about Johnson & Johnson, they tell you, well, you know, this one is taking... I said, let me tell you something. If you don't have them sticks in here for me to be able to see my blood sugar, I am going to go on Perkins. You're going to go where? On Willie Perkins. Uh-huh. Oh, no, Mr. Hotel, don't bother with that. Don't bother with that, Mr. Hotel. I said, well, you can't take me for my word. If I don't get it by Thursday, I will. Well, Thursday, I got a call. Mr. Hotel, I have the slips for you. How many do you want? I said, not how much I want, you know. What about the drugstores? Nobody has any from Crossroads to Papine. Oh. We're, we're going to pick out some and send them. I check like any drug. You got any of the one touch? As Miss Steve, we got three little boxes. 
a check as mass, them don't get none. What these people doing? Why take over an agency if you cannot supply the needs of Jamaica? But they told you that they had them for you. So why didn't you but get I them? But I don't care about me. I've got some, but I don't care about me. Oh, I see. What about all those poor people in the yes, country quite all true. over? Quite that true. depends. I cannot look out so for who myself. Was it, who was it that supplied you those? Moscow. Oh. Who gets from Johnson and Johnson and I'm going round and round in circles. But Miss T don't say anything because we're going into a partnership with Johnson and Johnson. When I go to Johnson and Johnson, oh Miss T, we are going to be out of it soon because Laska will take care of it. I say, you know something, this earth is getting too big. All I want is that that ship come in and bring those things. Diabetes is not something to fool with. Uh -huh. Up to now, no drugstore don't have none. And oh. believe me, I spent a half day checking them. But have you brought this to the attention of Sister P? I don't speak to Sister P. She's not the Minister of Health. You don't and I would never get him. They would never let a lowly person like me speak to Mr. Daly, who does not damn thing about health. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did get him, it would be a lot of bad words, so it wouldn't be worthwhile getting If what? Hold on. If you did get him... It would be a lot of bad words. A lot of bad words? Yes. Very, very bad words. Oh, is you that so? You don't fool with people's lives. Do you know you can use your... your hold hold on just a moment for me. Okay, we're back. Uh, hello? This year, you're going to hear of a new Faye Tortella, right? A new what? Faye Tortella. A new Faye Tortella this year. I don't oh, incidentally, I should have wished you a happy new year. Happy new year to you and your lovely wife. Oh, thank you very much. Willie, uh -huh. I didn't listen last week because it was Joan Williams. Couldn't bother listening to that. Why? No, 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 no. You're not going to scare me you bad for the new year. She's not going to scare you? No, you are not scaring me to listen to people I don't want to hear. So you don't come, I don't turn on. Oh. Listen to me now. Let's get into this. You're going to hear a fate or teller. I was going to tell you how greedy these merchants are. They're so greedy that they, they represent every little thing they can put their hand on. And they're no, not supplying one specific one. There goes the diabetes people. They're out. In so the you, blue. But you're, you're not accusing um, Lasco of greed? I'm accusing them of picking up agencies that they're not following up. No, but they don't hold on. Fool around with, with no, diabetes. no, no. But if once they run out of supplies, um, that is not, does not establish any greed. If you worship people, you run out of sugar. You know, people want sugar. Don't you have it order in advance? Don't you watch? This is a necessity. Yes, but there can be problems that occur that make it difficult for you to get your supplies. No, there's no problem. What? They say they ordered it six months ago. I they you ordered it and it has not arrived or whatever. Will, right? will you stop and saying eventually the opposite it came. to what I am saying? I say it is bad. Diabetes is not something to fool with. I now know it is not something to fool with. Let's but, get to the but pressure. But they, they haven't got the... They're not the only people who could, could bring supplies into Jamaica. They're the only ones. They're the agents. The agent first, for what? It was, first, it was Mr. Blade's company, right? Yes, but it isn't only one company that makes um, that makes these things. Pfeiffer, I've traced it all the way back to the Americans. Pfeiffer in the United States. And they say no use to call them because there's nothing they can do about it. Uh -huh. Right? That's what they tell me out here. Uh -huh. All right, next one. They, they're it's fine sensor. if there's nothing they can do they can about do it. About it isn't it, their right? fault. No, there's nothing they can do about it. So what? How do the diabetics test their sugar to know whether they take insulin or don't take it? Drop that? Um. <laughs> Stop that answer now. Come on, we're going to depression. Effects are. You're going into depression? No. The pill of effects are. Uh -huh. You're so dying to contradict me and not even hear what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not co trying to contradict you. Effects are. It's for depression. And in 20 years, I have taken every kind of pill, every known, every one, uh -huh. till we found Effexor. And Effexor is beautiful. It works. And it's wonderful. It, 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 it helps you. They went on a big campaign to every doctor giving them these tablets to advertise so they could sell it. You know what happened now? 
not an effect stories in the country. That's so what? you'll see a lot of mad people and depressed people walking all around the place. And that one now is Mr. Hopwood sold to Neil and Massey. You know where Neil and Massey was before? Doing nothing. I see them sell them selling tires now. And they have the agency for this pharmaceutical drug for depression. I, I can't trace that one back. So if I run out of it, I have to go into depression. Because I've tried three, four different places and asked them all the way down to East Queen Street Pharmacy. I've been up in the Papin, gone. Well, what, is, what is happening? Why, um, why supplies of products like these? Maybe if you would are, investigate, are so you would hear. Uncertain. If you investigate, you would hear. Or if the government did. Depression is not a nice thing. The what? Depression is not a nice thing. I know that, but uh, I mean, it, it, it doesn't have. It, w the fact of the matter is, what you're telling me is that supplies of the particular goods that you've been talking about are are so uncertain. Very, uh, never used to be, but now. No, no, no the, like, the question is why? What is it that is happening that is causing Maybe they have a new product that they want to push more. Forget about that one. I don't know. Neil and Massey belongs to Trinidadians, as you know. And Trinidad is fast taking over Jamaica. Trinidad right? is fast taking over Jamaica? That's right. Is that so? The insurance companies. But the very, it's very odd that you you are supporting a government that is allowing Trinidad Will to you take over Jamaica. Will you please go into politics? Eh? That is a private concern. What Neil and Massey bought it from H.D. Hopwood. Yes, I'm saying that Those are something is concerns. going on. Why, uh, why Trinidad is in a position to take over Jamaica? I, that part I can't solve. Uh -huh. But I know anything they touch, it's bound to go down. Price Mart. Price Mart used to be so well kept and Price Mart. Uh -huh. And clean and, and nice to go to. Now, Trinidadians. When you go in there, one boy tell me, Lady, lift your thing out your basket yourself. I say, I cannot lift that. That's very heavy. Well, if you don't lift it, you can't pay for it because I'm not lifting it out. I said, let me tell you something. You sound like you could be at university. You're not ashamed to be in here punching a cashier. Ah, uh, cash register. Is that me? Mrs. Tortella. I don't know the boy, you know. I will not have you speaking like that to me. Now, the things are over there. You will either put them in the cart or you will not get them. I said, well, that's good. They're over there. They're in the cart. If you don't put them in my cart, you won't get paid. Goodbye. And was quite a lot of things on the counter. He goes to tell his auntie. The aunt, the supervisor, she comes flying over. Then put the thing in his thing, Kalebumana. He says, I am not here to put things in a basket. And I'll have you know, I do go to the university. I said, what you could be studying up there? You need to study manners. Right? Can you imagine? Older women coming in for us, you're not there, you can't buy, but big amounts at a time. Condensed milk, you have to buy probably 24 cans. I can't lift them. Yes. And this boy who is young is telling me about if I don't lift it, then it won't get into the bag to pack it. Uh -huh. I said, <laughs> you know what? You have the goods, I have the cash. What about $10,000? I said, goodbye, I'm gone. You see how fast the auntie run over and start to it out. They, they come up here and they figure, we are idiots, which we must be. Yes, I'll... They, they take over the companies one by one, and they say, these Africans up here don't need nothing. They don't understand what's going on. We will show them, and they are showing It's part them. of the decay that is occurring in this country. Their past prime minister is on his way to jail. In Trinidad? Right? Huh? In Trinidad? In Trinidad, can't they? He's on his way to jail? Well, I mean, he, 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 they put him in there still. Oh, I don't know. I see he's been restored. I see he's been restored to the <laughs> leadership of his party. That's quite, that's quite cute. But for just having an overseas bank account, my God. Can you imagine if that Trinidadian prime minister was out here and see what took place during the partisan regime? But if he, if, if a Jamaican prime minister had a, 
an overseas account at a time when it was in any way legal to do so. I don't know that um, that it would have caused much of a stir. That is a minor thing. Eh? That is a minor thing. I see. Yes, because that's not a fact. Do, do you here, think it would have caused much of a stir in Jamaica? No, 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 no. 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 At all. Because with what we have, we, f- we have these damn talks about them in the pack, in the, in the House of Parliament, on the radio, anything to make news and have the politicians flap it out. Right? Uh-huh. We know who did it. We know where it's gone. And we still turn around and employ the same people. Yes, well. Now, I want you to investigate for me who owns New Line cars. New Line? New Line cars. Cars. Yes, yes, coming from China. Uh Uh-huh. I know who owns it. One of them. I know. Right, it doesn't matter who owns it. What, What does it matter? Well, as fast as you throw them out with all that money, as fast as I find something else uh-huh. to make more. Well, right? what's wrong with making money? This, they had enough when they were there. <laughs> I tell you, this country, uh-huh. but I'm talking about sickness. Anyway, labor right. No, forget that business. No, no, I'm not going We have I'm, a lot of people holding on. I'm fed up. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, labor right. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take some email now. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Perkins, Uh I can see why our Prime Minister said she's not in the chatting business. Because every time she opens her mouth, she leaves people bewildered. She what? She leaves people bewildered. Bewildered. Uh For example... She says she doesn't read the newspapers or listen to the news. Uh Uh Yet, she criticizes the media for negative Uh reporting. Um, And for not carrying her achievements. Um. (laughs) Two. I wonder what those are. She claims that she's being criticized because she's a woman. Yet, she's honored all over the island and in the diaspora as well as the, as the first woman Prime Minister of Jamaica third when asked if the Trafigura money was sent back or would be sent back she said ask the PNP <laughs> yet she's the leader of the PNP yes uh-huh. I would like our PM to focus on her successes as well as her failures because this is a fundamental principle by which she will identify her strength and her weakness. She must be frank with herself regardless of her, regarding her failures as accomplishments as well as her accomplishments because great leaders are willing to learn both from failures and success. Well, uh, that which that involves that. admitting and accepting responsibility in both areas. That writer obviously thinks that she has accomplishments. Um, okay, we take a break. We come back shortly. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here on land. Hmm. Mr. Perkins, I have two questions for you. The first is, does a state of emergency ever rise to the status of a war? No, I don't think so. I don't see why it should. They're two quite different things. I ask that first question in order to state the second. According to a section of the Constitution which deals with it, the Governor General may at any time by a proclamation published in the Gazette prorogue or dissolve Parliament subject to the provisions of subsection 3 of that section. Parliament, unless sooner dissolved, shall continue for five years from the date of its first sitting after any dissolution and shall stand dissolved. At any time when Jamaica is at war, 
Parliament may, from time to time, extend the period of five years specified in subsection 2 of this section for not more than 12 months at a time. Do you think that Lady P holds a handle on this issue? <laughs> no, I don't see what the relevance of that is at the moment. I don't know that there is any war in the office. This one is very difficult to read, but I will try because it is long and it is dark. Uh, it is an article um, sent to us by email from... Uh, column in today's copy of the New York Times which is written by Orlando Patterson uh -huh. we all know who Orlando Patterson yes. was is um, he's a former uh, student and I believe lecturer at the, at the university. university a novelist uh -huh. Um, to of Sisyphus and other writings um, and he's now at Harvard uh -huh. he's writing this guest column he's a professor of sociology at Harvard and he's a guest columnist in the New York Times yeah the article is entitled The Travails of Sister P it's what? The Travails of Sister P. Or the travails of Sister P. Right. Uh -huh. Or travails. Kingston, Jamaica. 32 years ago, a young working class woman, Portia Simpson, exploded onto the Jamaican political scene with an unexpected electoral victory in the slums of West Kingston, Southwestern Kingston, the heart of opposition party turf, dominated by armed political gangs. Soon after, I accompanied her on a tour of the area in the hope of laying plans for an urban upgrading project. As we approached Reba, a notorious opposition holdout, five gunshots pierced the heat. Dashing for cover, I look back to see Simpson being reluctantly pulled away by two of our aides. Left to herself, she would have carried on. So deep was her hunger to help the people from whom she had just risen. I thought then, this woman would go far. She did. Last February... Portia Simpson Miller stunned the political establishment by outmaneuvering her the heir apparent, Peter Phillips, in the struggle to succeed Prime Minister P.J. Patterson, who retired in midterm. And in March, she took office as Jamaica's first female leader. There was national jubilation, especially among women who wept at the sight of Mama, Auntie Portia, or Sister P as they lovingly call her. Even skeptics felt it was hard to do worse than what the men had achieved for the mass of the Jamaicans in abysmal poverty after four decades of modernization, which had benefited only the middle and upper classes, Simpson's approval rating soared, and for a steady few weeks she claims the claims of her supporters, that the healing hand of a woman was what the country needed, seemed borne out. And an almost tactile sense of unity and goodwill soothed the anxieties of daily life in this overheated polity. The honeymoon was brief. Hardly two months into her leadership, opposition forces and the media unleashed a barrage of criticisms against her. The gist being that she was hopelessly unqualified for the job. Her modest education, undistinguished performance in Parliament, Creole speech, populism and refusal to face the press have been grist for the media and the opposition mill. What turned a tidal wave of criticism into a tsunami, however, was the revelation that 
a Dutch commodities firm, Trafigura Beheer, which does business with the government, had misrepresented a campaign donation of 470,000 US dollars that it made to her party. In fact, Jamaica had no in fact, Jamaica has no campaign finance laws to break, and there's a long tradition of businesses donating to political parties. The government, however, handled the relevant the revelation ineptly before returning the money. Before what the devil is this? The government, however, handled the revelation ineptly uh -huh. before returning the money. Oh, has it returned the money? Providing endless fodder for the media. On Sunday, I had a candid two-hour conversation with Sister P at her official residence. She's defiant as ever. At 61, she appears in her early 40s. Her youthfulness emphasized by deep bangs hanging over her dark, sparkling eyes. She noted that in 2006, the economy grew at one of the fastest rates in the years. Oh, is that so? 2.4%. <laughs> Inflation was low. 5.3%. <laughs> and that major crime fell by 20%. Uh -huh. So why the criticisms? Because I'm a woman in a field dominated by men and because of my background, she insisted. Why has she been avoiding the press? I've been beaten, banged and bashed by the media, she said. They're trying to kill my charisma. She has been beaten, banged and what? Bashed. Backed? Bashed by the press. They're trying to kill my charisma, she said. <laughs> because every time they see me, they are looking at the majority of Jamaicans who are poor. And they can only think, how dare this uppity woman? She added later, as leader, I have the right to refuse to speak to those who misrepresent what I say. She dismissed the Trafigura affair as media exaggeration. The only impropriety coming from the company, which to circumvent Dutch laws, misrepresented the donation. She's confident of winning the coming elections, although her approval rating in the polls is down to 30%. Mistakes have been made. And Sister P has to change her attitude towards the press. But I share her belief that Jamaica's patriarchalism and class biases are stacked against her. So too is the British parliamentary system that operates here, which requires of leaders a demanding mix of political, debating, and executive skills. Sister P embraced me and kissed me on the cheek as we parted. I wish her luck in the coming elections required by October. She's going to need it. Oh. It's by Orlando Patterson. H. Orlando Patterson. Professor of Sociology at Harvard. <laughs> Guest columnist in today's New York Times. Oh, but that's a funny article. Um, give, leave that copy. Yes, yes, ma'am. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Mr. Perkins, can you please find out from the Prime Minister whether they are now taking money from Peter to pay Paul? That is, from South America to pay back Trafigura? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that is what is happening, but um, that is what Mr. Golding suggested. But... Um, Mr. Perkins, I'm sending you a copy of a letter which I have sent to Mr. Donald Buchanan, MP. Dear Donald Buchanan, MP, my family and I visited Jamaica over the Christmas holidays and intended to stay at my father's house in Mountainside, Round Hill, St. Elizabeth. 
Upon arrival, I was told that there was no running water for several months. Now, my father is 96, old and blind. His caregiver has five children, whom she also has to take care of. Can you imagine how much water is needed each day in order to run a large household with everyone taking at least a shower a day? I was also told that the same one from the water the same one from the Water Commission in St. Elizabeth. Oh, he means someone. I was also told that someone from the Water Commission in St. Elizabeth has removed the existing large pump and sent it to Manchester. The pump that was used to replace the large one is not effective since no water can be pumped up the hill since the removal of the old pump. As you know, the residents of Round Hill are elderly and poor and have no means by which to obtain potable water. The residents also said that the water truck has not been seen in the area since the removal of the pump. Mr. Buchanan, I am so ashamed and stressed out. I had to leave my father's house in Mountainside and spend my entire vacation in a hotel in Black River which was not only expensive but inconvenient. Sir, I'm pleading with you to look into the matter for the sake of the residents of Round Hill, St. Elizabeth, who seem to have no one to represent them. You were at one time the Minister of Water and Works, and the people in your constituency are suffering because of water shortage. Well, an index of what people are suffering all over Jamaica. We take a break. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello? 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, Mr. Perkins, yes. I've been here to you, sir. Oh, thank you very much, and the same to you. Yes, I'm just calling a response to a lady who called saying she couldn't get this drug FXR. Couldn't get what? This oh, the drug. Drug FXR. Uh huh. Yes, I could leave one number with you. Uh huh. That you could call to get it. Uh, a number what? A number, a telephone number. Yes. Where she could get it. Well, where she could get the drugs? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, yes, what's that number? Okay, it's 986. 986-3247. 3247. Yeah. And what place is that? This is Veer Pharmacy. 986-3247 is the number? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what pharmacy is this? Veer. Veer? Yeah, Veer. V R Veer, Veer. And Clarendon. where is that? In Clarendon. In Clarendon? Mm. I see. Oh, Veer? Yeah. Veer in Clarendon? Yes, sir. I see. So how do you happen to have it all the way down there and um, it's not, be, uh, not available in Kingston? I'm not sure. You have different movement uh -huh. in, in different areas. I see. Maybe, maybe, maybe in Kingston there are more depressed people. I see what you mean. Where, where, you know, the rural areas there's a lot, lot more space, more clean air. I see. All right. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Perkins. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? Not too bad. Um, I wish you health for the for the new year. Oh, thank you very much. I, do, I, do, I don't think I can wish you anything better. The very that. same to you. I hope you have a, more than health. Okay, sir. I hope you have happiness. Okay, sir. Well, <laughs> Although happy. living in Jamaica, you know. There's no happiness in Jamaica, you know, Mr. Uh -huh. Because when you feel like things should get better. I beg your pardon? When you feel like things should get better, uh -huh. it gets worse. Every day things get worse. Yes, speak up a bit for me. Every, every day things get worse. Well, sir, let's hope that, um, you know, they say the darkest hour is before the dawn, you know. Okay. Mr. Perkins. Yes. I, I want to know why some people try to, you know, try try to say things. They know the things are wrong. Uh -huh. But they try to um, make excuses. Well, they possibly because they see themselves as having an interest in... Um, 
in the success of those who do wrong. I don't know. Mr. Perkins, if you, if you, if you, I know you listen to your evening radio. To the what? Evening radio. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And if you ever hear some of those people on radio, uh -huh. people who, who are lawyers, people who are, uh, have access to the media, uh -huh. and if you ever hear them making excuse for a corrupt government, I tell you, it is a shame. You think so? It is a shame, Mr. Perkins. It's a shame, I tell you, Mr. Perkins. It's sick stomach. Uh -huh. Because, you know, these people, you know, they, they are going to pay the price, you know, because when you know the truth, you must speak the truth so that people will understand. And you don't try to keep a corrupt thing in process. Right? You try, you, you try to get rid of corruption. Because corruption is the root of all evil. Corruption? Yes. Yes. Is the root of all evil. Well, uh, I don't know. It's the root of a great deal of evil. Yes, I'm telling you, Mr. Perkins. And this, this regime that we have here, that say they are a government, uh -huh. they are really corrupt. Mr. You Perkins, so? you have people will be suffering for bad roads for five for yes. six years. And Mr. Perkins, when there is time for election, you see they come around on the asphalt road all in the night. <laughs> Mr. Perkins. No, they have a better technique than that. What? They drop the stuff. You know? They um, maul and the whatever it is. And if it is the thinking of laying types, they uh, you know, drop the pipes and thing, and then a couple of days before election, and then the election occurs and they, they win. They take over the pipe. And um, a, a week or so later, they send and pick up back the pipes. <laughs> well, Mr. Perkins, <laughs> I've seen it with my eyes, you know. You've seen it? Seen it with my eyes. Yes. Roads, roads that they work on night, night time. I tell you, Mr. Perkins, and these people, they have this system going, right, to fool the people. Uh -huh. And when the people suffer so, for so long, you know, Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. and the road start to fix them, say, yes, man, I could vote to them. But hold on a little bit. If, if you, um, if you, s people see those things happen, right, they allow them, and allow themselves to be fooled by it again. Whose fault is it? It's the people, Mr. Perkins. Oh, well. It's the people, you know. Yes, people, uh, what the, the people want, the people get. The people, I tell you, Mr. Perkins, the people are so senseless. They don't have, they don't have the thinking of a dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, some dog, well, some dog, I tell you, Mr. Perkins. That's a bit much, sir. Eh? That's a bit much. Lord, I tell you, Mr. Perkins, what, what, what you can say, Mr. Perkins, huh? you can't have a government in power for 18 years, right? Uh-huh. And the condition of this country, I heard Mr. Desmond McKenzie, over two years now, the, the man them gets spray, right? Uh -huh. For money to clean the drains, so that mosquito won't breed. Uh -huh. And now you have malaria, and then look how much money them spend. Eh? Yes, well. Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. let me tell you something, you know. This country, this country, we the all ahead, Mr. Perkins, I tell you, you know, all we have to do, you know, is to just live and enjoy what we work for, uh -huh. right? Because uh, apparently me and you don't have nowhere to go, you know? Uh -huh. I and you don't have anywhere else to go. That's true. Nowhere else to go. But all we have, all we have to do, you know, is to just sit and watch. Uh-huh what will happen in this coming election because I tell you something you know I heard Mr. Lucius Thomas come out come tell people about bloody election him no part gonna store and this something and and then what a fool fool man like that he man I wouldn't call him a fool fool man what you so. call him eh? what do you call him well the fact that you make a statement that that somebody makes a statement that of which I do not approve does make him a fool fool man <laughs> so why did he do it? Well, I don't know. Maybe um, just a matter of misjudgment or 
I don't know. To get people scared. Or maybe he really knows better than we do what um what the circumstances demand. I and don't maybe know. he know why he did it. Eh? Maybe he knows why he did it. Uh -huh. And you know, from last year you can listen to some of the people who are, ca who are talking about violent election. Uh -huh. You can listen to them and you can know the stripes that they wear. Right? Uh -huh. Last year. You hear them on the radio, you see them writing paper, but th those people have a plan, but I, I think, I, I think, you know, that Jamaican people eyes will be opened. Well, let's hope so. Will be opened. And I, I tell you something, Mr. Perkins, God bless you here. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Okay, Hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, I think that um, um, the Prime Minister is a gift from God. If what? I think the Prime Minister is a gift from God. To oh, is that so? Yes. Yes. L let's and hear about that. And the reason why I said so is because God has given Jamaica a gift to see the direction where Jamaica will be going with this Prime Minister. Uh -huh. She called it an early election from last year. Uh -huh. And we have made in a mistake and vote for her. Well, this is the gift that Jamaica people have got, is to see there is no new direction that will be coming from this Prime Minister. Nothing new. So this is the gift we get to know where we stand and how we supposed to vote coming this election. I see. Yes, this is... But you don't think that she's doing well? Doing well. Uh -huh. Doing, um, what, uh, depends on what you can well, well, she says the economy is growing and... Well, you know, um, things... Inflation is anything. down and... Any, anybody could say anything. The she old donkey right. cart is running efficiently. Yeah, you see, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in that out. Yeah? I would like to say one thing here. Who would benefit from a delayed election here in Jamaica? A delayed election. Yeah. If the um, if the electoral general um, um director what his name is um postpo uh, postponed the election because of violence. Um. Well, I don't know who would benefit. Who do you think would benefit? Who would still be in office? Why these sound bites keep coming out um violence in election and why these things keep coming out in an election here? Well, I don't know that it it would um the postponement of the election would necessarily be of benefit to to the government in office. Somebody will be still holding office. Yes, but um but that doesn't necessarily mean very much. Uh because, you know, it might only show people how much worse the but government is than they are th day, thought. A day delay is a day with the same thing going on. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know, sir. Um, At Mr. Perkins, a lot of these young kids that grew up in Jamaica, you know, uh -huh. were baby at the time when this government was in office. Yes. Where is the hope that this government placed in front of them that they see that they don't that, that they give them the hope not to turn to crime? I don't know. I don't you know. You don't know. I don't know, but you know, maybe maybe we are not seeing all that we should. Let this let this government really tell us. Yeah? Where is the growth? Where the people of Jamaica is growing? <laughs> tell, tell the government, tell, do a program on your radio. Yes. Tell the farmers to call in and ask them which one of them life has been better since this agricultural big growth going on. All farmers call in tomorrow and tell us. You don't listen to Mr. Greenspin, sir? Mr. Greenspin, yes. I always listen to Mr. Greenspin. Yes, well, don't you hear um, all about the growth and the... <laughs> But that is the thing. Spin, 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 spin. Oh, yeah? I like the way you say it. It's not Mr. Greenspan. <laughs> it's Mr. Greenspin. You understand me? <laughs> you have to understand, Mr. Perkins. This is just a spin. And the Jamaican people are being spinned around too many times. And it's time for them now to wake up and give their kids a chance. If they don't love themselves, give their kids a chance. This is what the kids are waking up to. It's our responsibility to vote for the kids of Jamaica. If we, if we don't vote for the red stripe here, vote for the kids of Jamaica. Don't watch your kids going into a coffin and cry. It's your fault. Vote for the kids of Jamaica. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Okay, hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, this is Mr. Richards here, I dare say, old chap. Eh? This is Mr. Richards here. Mr. Richards? I have a lot of respect for you, sir. Uh-huh. I think you're very bright for a chap who never went to university. Oh, is that so? But... Thank you very much. But... Uh-huh. As I said to you in my email, the moment we want to believe something, we suddenly see all the arguments for it. Would you, would you like speak a little louder for me? Expensive. Speak a little more, uh, more directly into the phone. I said to you, the moment we see belief, the moment we want to believe something, we suddenly uh. see all the arguments for it and become blind of the arguments against it. Okay. And I'm basically saying, you know, we're all human beings. Sometimes we become blinkered. And we fail to see certain arguments. So I'm going to start off with Trafiguro. Yes. Trafiguro, these things happen in this country and other countries where companies donate money to political parties. Uh huh. The, the minister or the person involved normally resigns and the money is supposed to be refunded. And that's the end of the argument. Uh huh. Hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here. Hello? Hello, sir. I don't yes. Old chap. Uh huh. What, we were talking about the the thing where you failed to look at the other side of the argument, weren't we? Would you? No, I'm not hearing you very well. Would you keep your voice? I think we were talking about looking at the other side of the argument. Uh huh. And I mentioned traffic gurus. Uh huh. And I'm saying to you, these things happen in all parts of the world where people donate money to political parties. The people who are responsible resign. And the argument is the money's paid back. So we need to we, we need to move away from that sort of thing. We need to have a balanced view. We're all human beings. We need to sit down and be balanced. And I, I you know, I, I think, as I said before, I think you're a very bright chap. Because um, you know, for one who I've has not been to a university, in the UK for so many for so long, uh-huh. and I've sent you cases T- on tell death me something. penalty. Tell me something. Like that. Tell me something. But, but we need uh, to have a... Hello, point. sir. Hello, sir. We, you're listening? I'm listening to you, sir. Uh, uh, who, which university did Socrates attend? I can't remember, sir. You can't remember? Conveniently, I cannot. You go oh, conveniently? Yeah. What about Aristotle? Conveniently, I, I, I can't remember that. Uh-huh. But what I about, remember what about saying that... What about you, William Shakespeare? A, a politician will tell you he's going, going to build a bridge. Where Hello, sir. Water. Hello. What about I, William I said, Shakespeare? But I could remember Christoph saying a politician will tell you he's going to build a bridge. Hello, sir. Are we going to have a water. conversation? Or are you Sorry? just going to talk on? No, I'm talking about I sent you an email, sir. I am, yes, I'm, but I'm asking you a question. And I'm saying, I'm, I conveniently, I can't remember that. You can't remember. You know, of, no, you, but you know that Shakespeare went to a university. No. You don't. I see. No, I'm not aware of that. You're not aware. What no, about sir. that chap who invented the um, who who developed the steam engine? What was no, his name again? This is the argument is not about who went to university <laughs> or who didn't. So I, I I've said to you, you're a very bright chap, but someone uh-huh. who did not go to university. Well, I don't know about my being a very bright university. guy, but it. Yes, uh, it, you seem to Airlines. you seem That's to think that you what seem to I think that brightness you, is necessarily sir, associated with, with university. I think you need to have a balanced view. Yes. Very no, let me ask you something. Yes, sir. All over the world, yes, sir. Um, businesses make contri- political contributions. That's, that's what I, well, I'm talking about England, America. Yes. And that's what I'm aware well, of. Well, it happens in Jamaica, too. No, that's what I'm saying. Yes, so why, there's nothing wrong with cost? it. But it is one thing, would you recognize that it is one thing for Grace Kennedy to make a, contrib- a political contribution? Another thing entirely, for a company that is not resident in Jamaica, not in any way part of the Jamaican community, to be making a contribution to a political party here? Well, uh, from the information I've read, I could Hold say on for me, sir. wrong there. Hold on for Pastor me. The guru is, is, was, was doing what yes, he was doing on behalf of Jamaica. Yes, sir. Hold on. I can right. understand Grace Kennedy. Making a contribution. Hold on. Because Grace Kennedy lives in Jamaica. Right? 
and and has an interest in the way the law is upheld in Jamaica, Fair the way sir. roads are, whether roads are properly constructed and so on. But they but have sir, an interest in that. And in the way law and order is maintained and so on. I, I, I what not... interest does Trafigura have that would, that would make them want, have an interest in who know. wins the Jamaican election? Could I refer you to election? a Westminster issue, cash for questions? Hello? Could I refer you to a Westminster issue? Westminster? Cash for questions. Westminster? What is Westminster? Parliament in this country, England, cash the questions. Westminster? Where the lobbyists were being paid to ask questions of various means. Where is so Westminster? these things happen. Where is People Westminster, sir? People are going to donate to something because they expect to get something back. W hold on. Uh, where, where and what? What and where is Westminster? Westminster, the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Is Westminster? Come on, Motti. Don't play, mate. No, man. It's not Westminster. Well, if I got it wrong, I got it wrong. I'm only human. It's Westminster. W Listen, at the end of the day, what I'm saying to you is... W-E-S-T-M-I-N-S-T-E-R. -E 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 I can't spell, sir. <laughs> what? I, I use a spell check. What? I use a spell check. I can't spell. You can't spell. I use a spell check. I, I see. I say old check. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is, you can't yeah? Either. We know, listen, sir. What I'm saying is, we need to have a balanced view. And we're going to move away from that. The ish, a project, the dome in this country overrun by, I can't even tell you the figure, millions of dollars. You're always talking about overrun. Any government hold, project. Hold on, sir. Any you, government project. You need overrun. to answer, you need to answer the relevant question. What's the relevant what question is the are interest? Saying? What is the what interest? What is the relevant of, question? Are they what is the interest of Trafigura in the outcome of a Jamaican election? I've just told you. What? I hope that they will get some benefit. What benefit? I don't know. I, I you have to speak to the, the uh, Colin Campbell. I dare say. <laughs> yes, indeed. Because I don't know. And before we go any further, the uh -huh. problem we have with, with Jamaican politics... What? Oh, 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 let, me put it, let me put it another way. What legitimate interest right. could Trafigura have in fair, the outcome that's a fair of a Jamaican comment, But what I'm saying to you, that happens in all parts of the world, and the, the person who is who responsible for it resigns, and the money is returned, quote-unquote. But hold on, no, then. nobody knows that the doesn't money put an end to it, sir. That, because Colin example, Campbell, in this country, Colin the Campbell was Azul by no Lazier. means, Colin, Colin clear, Campbell would have been clear. by no means the only person involved Sorry? in it, would he? Could you say that again, please, sir? Would, would, was Colin Campbell the only person here in Jamaica involved in it? I, ha I haven't got the evidence. You haven't and in got the evidence. And in a court of law, it has to be proven. You're, but a whole a a party, proven the, guilty. the money was not given to Colin Campbell, sir. Was it? I didn't say it was. Was it? Well, he was resigned. It a, wasn't it given to a political party? It was. It was given to the the People's National Party. The People's National Party. Yeah. So why is Colin Campbell resigning? Because he's a member people's, of the People's National why Party. Why not the part pe of the government? Why is not the People's National Party resigning? How can the whole party resign? How you mean? Listen, sir. I don't understand you. Listen, sir. You when, have never heard of a when, government resigning. When sir. when Tony Blair sent when Tony Blair decided to go to war with Iraq. Yes. Why didn't Tony Blair resign? Oh, you mean why everybody he didn't in resign? the government was against what he, he, him being a poodle? Look, yes. there's accountability, ministerial responsibility. But the British people went along with him. At why the should time, he, they, they, why should not, he resign? Not in general terms. There was people who disagreed. Look, we have collective and individual respons ministerial right. responsibility. And if the if party... If you are head of a particular department... And if the People's National Party accepted a gift of the sort from Trafigura, right? Yeah. And not only that, lied about it, right? Mm. Um, well... I, I don't know. Sir, I, could I, I, could I, I, could I, could I bring you a bit further? I withdraw. A bit further back. Um, uh, could I bring I, you a bit further back? Ten, uh -huh. tw years ago, whatever years ago? Is that possible? It, that what? Is that possible for me to refresh your memory? About what? How could we have 
a, mini, a prime minister of the Jamaica Labour Party, a minister of finance, with a 120 million what, US dollar loan, and forget to service the loan? Come on. You no, are... You, no, no, look, no, no, no. I, lo I think you're very interesting, but no, I no, think no, no, you no. are... No, no, the, no, no. You are, are the, the, the you thing are the for the Jamaica Labour Party, You're sir. talking about... I'm Mrs. suggesting, I'm hold, suggesting hold that you are the spin doctor for the Jamaica Labour Party. We say that if you like. Right? In no uncertain terms. Say that if you like. But I, don't I mind. think I, you are I very want, intelligent chap. I want you to tell me what yes, I sir. have said on this program. Tell you what, sir. That that is not true. Or what, what is not argument true, sir? I have put forward that is not valid. Look, right? I, well, uh, I'll go back to my email. Uh -huh. When that lady was arguing and she said, uh, actually, I, I'm on the computer, I need to get it up. And you, you really disre disrespected that lady. Which lady? When she was talking about the uh, uh, assistant commissioner. And you really showed your Jamaican ignorance there, sir. Which lady am I talking about? We're no, talking about talking? when the lady was talking, uh, when after you spoke to Commissioner Green. I didn't record this, so I cannot remember exactly, but you, your behavior. It's like I saw a woman in Oxford Street in a shop with which, the Arabs which eating woman are we talking tea. about? And and what I'm going to go like say? how you go. I'm going to say, yo, all you come out people in country and yam the food and the people in place. I said that? No, I'm telling you what happened. What, I'm giving you an, an analogy. I, I, saw somebody I tell you what, I have to take circuit. a break. And it's a longish break. Um, would you like to hold on, though? I'll hold. Uh, what time? Do, how long is the break, sir? What? How long will the Maybe break be, Maybe ten minutes. Sir? Maybe ten minutes. Oh, hold on, mate. Yes, no okay. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Oh, Hello. Up. Hello. How are you, sir? Oh, yes. How are you doing now? I'm here. Still I'm doing very off well, the comrade. Spoon. Eh? You're still stocking salt off the wooden spoon? I beg your pardon? Are you still stocking salt off the wooden spoon? Absolutely. Absolutely. Aren't you? No uncertain terms, I dare say. Aren't you? Now, what I'm saying to you, sir. Yes. When the commission, when um, the assistant commissioner Green, so he, he made some comments. He was talking about what happened in uh, was it St James, I think. And the, when the you, the woman in was Manchester. saying, to you, I can't remember the exact. You need to, you need to listen to the tape. Oh, I've got it online. I'll have to listen to it again. Yes, there are lots of things that you the seem not to be able to remember. And you made an insulting statement, sir. Uh huh. And I, I was very much disappointed in you. Yes. What but was we're it? All that human it, beings. What was it that I said? I cannot remember. Catholic you can't history. remember what I said. Well, we can't but discuss it. Was it was rude. I was rude. It was very rude. Uh huh. But you have I to. Say. You, I mean, it is irresponsible look, look, to I'm be not, making such I an accusation. Hold on, sir. It, it was it rude. It is irresponsible to be making such an accusation. Sir, and not be listen, able no, to no, present, sir, on the tape. and not to be a, not being able to present the evidence. What it was that you, what it is that you are saying, was constituted rudeness. I cannot remember everything. Well, you I can't remember. You, you seem not to be able to, to remember a, a damn thing. You can't. You, you get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all have. We all. We're all human beings. We all can't be lawyers. And, and you, you have nerves. the nerve to talk so about people spinning. You are a spinner. Not perfect. You are a spinner, aren't you? Oh, how can I be a spinner? A spinner for what? For what the you PNP. You're here to make out that the PNP is right and I am wrong. No, <laughs> right? I'm here to Well, you can't that remember that what it is that I said that the, was wrong. Political parties take donations, sir. Huh? That's what I'm saying to you. Yes, sir, but political parties should not and be taking donations. Court taking donations. Political parties them. should not be taking donations from a foreign well, company. We need to have something in force that to prevent does that. That is not resident in Jamaica. But we need right? to have some legislation and it, in that force is breaching the that. laws of its own country in making that donation. Right? And also, that has one relationship with Jamaica, something having to do with the moving, movement of Nigerian oil, and that is, is giving in some years, Jamaica is earning. Well, then, per barrel. Ja Jamaica is earning, 
less from the Nigerian oil arrangement than Trafigura was giving to the PNP. But, sir, Isn't that very strange? You, Isn't that very strange? In the beginning, anybody who gives money Hold on, to a political Hold on party hopes to make it back tenfold. Comrade. I'll take you back to 1980. Comrade. Let me point. I'm not a comrade, sir. You're not a comrade. I'm an Englishman born in England. You're an Englishman born in England. I was born a black Englishman born in England. A black Englishman born in England. And I lived in Jamaica from the from 1965 to 1980. And Jamaica, I that's where I got what I'm talking about from. Uh -huh. That built me. That uh -huh. built me into what I am. Yes. But I I I get very upset when you sit there and you knock. Please, if you if you know the solution to the problem, help them, please. Uh -huh. Because I'm telling you now, the other party. You got what? You got to get that. 1980. Money ever jingle your pocket. That's our patrol life, you know, you know. That, so when you're ready, you, when you're going to knock the PMP, you say, you go, man, no girl, man, no care. Uh -huh. Man, no petrol for putting put that care for up on highway. So I'm going to be like you now. Oh, right. I see. We have to you're be bilingual. Fine, sir. You're bilingual. Um, you think I'm monkey my right hand? Yeah? <laughs> oh yeah, sir, man. Listen. Oh, I Forget see. That now. Listen. But no, look here. You have to be fair. Boy, I you, ha you certainly have a good English, English accent there. there was certain but look here. Was investing a lot you you lived in Jamaica from 1965 to 1980, right? Yeah. I can't count. Then can I? No, you said 1965 to 1980. I, I came to Jamaica August 1965, and I left there 1980. I was nine years old. I, oh, you're I nine years old. Nine years old. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. I see. And I learned an awful lot, and I'm disappointed with what Jamaica has come to, and it's not, it's not the political parties. We have to stretch back for a day now. Can you, we're missing the point. I I remember there was there was a um, <laughs> this all this thing started back in the third people I don't want to call the names. There was people in on both sides who were behaving in a particular manner, and this is what happened. It, it, the bird started there. You know I've I, I've got a DVD. I'm going to send it to you, and you watch it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where, you know, you watch it, and then you understand. You know what So from about. whence has come this attachment to the People's National Party? No, I'm not. Look, look, I'm not attached to no political party. I'm, uh -huh. I'm a balanced person. Hold on it's just a look. moment. Okay, thank you very much. You're calling from England, are you? Lost him. Good. Okay, uh, hello? <laughs> A time for more rational discourse. Hello? Yes. Yes? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Good afternoon to you, sir. Yeah, um, could you tell me something? When the PNP demitted office, 1980. Yes. Didn't they leave the country in a shambles, the economy? Uh, that's my recollection, sir. Yeah, we had negative economic growth. Yes. Um, eight and a quarter years after they resumed, what was the growth rate like? The economy had lost 25, about 25% of its value. Yes. Uh -huh. But when they resumed office in 1989, uh -huh. eight and a quarter years later, uh -huh. what was the growth rate like? Um, well, the economy was growing at the time significantly. Yes, significantly. Yeah. And the, mem the momentum of that growth carried over about two years in the PNP. I think, uh, I think so. So after 18 Possibly years, now they're growing about two and a half percent. Eh? Huh? After what? After 18 years. They yeah. are growing about two and a half percent. So they say, but I, <laughs> I'm well, looking around me, I... Anyhow, and if you look I at other countries in the region, it doesn't percent. have the amount of resources we have, doing far better. Uh -huh. You know, so that's a massive achievement for them. <laughs> massive, very massive achievement. Uh -huh. Another thing I would like to ask you, Mr. Perkins, what happened to that big ball that Mr. Patterson Commission was to be made? Which I would, I, you know, it would be very interesting to find yeah, out. It took a day and a half, 36 hours to pump. Yes. And we I were remember. told that it would have become a tourist attraction. Yes. So where is it attracting tourists I now? don't know, sir. I don't know. 
And it cost okay, nine million. It then. cost nine million dollars. Yes, yes. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> These are some other follies. I I would really like to know. Yes, sir. Anyhow, you have a pleasant. Afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank good you. Good. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Yes. Uh, you know, I find I find something very interesting, Mr. Perkins. What uh -huh. happened to the rule of law in Jamaica? Uh -huh. eh? The law is no longer a shackle. The law is no. The law has has the law is not uh, has for some long time not been a shackle. Mr. Patterson told us that um, when was it? Years ago. Yeah, and it seems that um, our new prime minister is following in his footsteps. Oh, is that so? Why yeah. you say that? I understand that a, office, a constituency office is being opened in St. Elizabeth that the Paris Council has not given approval for. And the Prime Minister is going down there to open the, a building that is not approved by the Paris Council. Um, when you say a building that is not approved, what do you mean? And the constituency office. Um, is it necessary for the, par for the Parish Council to give approval for a constituency? or building to be used as a constituency office? Well, uh, my understanding is, is that they are constructing a constituency office. They are constructing it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a different matter. And uh, as far as I know, when, what, if you even add it on to a building, you have to see, you have to submit a plan. I think you have to get a building permit. And you have to get the, the approval of the yes. parish council. And they haven't got the approval? No. You sure? Yeah, I heard it over the, over the, the radio. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Oh, well. So I was wondering what's really going on. Well, the law is not a shackle. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that the law is not a shackle, what? I guess that's that's why I'm being shafted. I've been shafted so many I, times as I'm played by I, the rules. I, hold, hold on, sir. I'm being told that it is not a building. It is two 40-foot trailers. Yeah. Painted orange. Yeah. That are being used to house the constituency office. Okay. And I, I doubt that that would require the approval of the parish council. Well, I'm not a legal expert on the matter still. Eh? I'm not a legal expert, but yes. I, I, but I understand that the mayor is saying that they need to get approval. I, I don't imagine. I, well, I mean, I can't imagine that um, that that would require approval. And I don't, I'm, I'm not certain still. No. Um, it's, a, a, a building would require a, a approval, but... Yeah, but if you're converting a container to a building, to... to no, a, no. A, you, no, 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 you're yeah. using a container. Yeah. As a, to house an office. Yeah. And I, I, as far as I know, I would be very surprised to hear that that would require approval of the parish council okay okay well uh -huh. um the next matter uh it came to my attention that this that there is an article in the new york times yes by Orlando Patterson. yes um stating a number of things i find rather interesting oh yes he <laughs> with regards to the traffic area issue well he, he mentioned that too yes yeah, I mean, for example, he's saying that the money was a donation to the People's National Party. Yes, um, and that Europe. was what the that was what the PNP said it was. Yeah, yes. but I mean, Trafalgar has come out and said that it was part of a contractual agreement. Well, then you see, the problem with with, with that is that that Trafalgar would have been breaching its own. Um, Dutch country's law. law. Yeah. In giving a donation to the PNP. Yeah. But he also stated that the money was returned to Traffic Girl. No, they, no, they. The article has, uh, No, the wrote. Prime Minister, um, purportedly gave instructions for the money to be returned. Yeah. But some weeks after, or Month. maybe months after. Months after. Um, she was asked whether it had been returned. And she said, ask the PNP. Yeah. And recently, she, being the president of the PNP, and um, some f more weeks later, the general secretary of the PNP is, is saying that the money 
had not been returned. Yeah, but I mean, so why is he writing in his article? I beg your pardon? Why is Mr. Patterson writing his, in his article that the money has been returned? Mr. Pat... Arlanda Patterson. Oh, well, um, you He's know... He's trying to mislead the public. Well, no, I suppose that he... He was going beyond his depth. He didn't know what he was talking about. Obviously, he never gone out to the PMP. Well, he precisely. <laughs> he said he spoke to Sister P. Um, but she wouldn't know what she wouldn't know whether it had been returned. So I don't know. Maybe he got a wrong impression. Okay. Because even though she's the president, she's now aware of what. Yes, she doesn't know what is going on. <laughs> 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 she doesn't know what is going on. I think it's a sad state of affairs that we're in. You think so? Yeah, when you have a prime minister. I don't who know. know. I mean, what she's is taking place. She's beautiful to look at, and um, <laughs> she likes the hug and kiss. And boy, if you ever get close and get a hug and a kiss, man, <laughs> it would send the jitters through you. <laughs> I got one once, so. <laughs> Yeah? I got one once. You got one once? Yeah. Oh, God, yes. When I was, um, what a lucky man. Yeah, when I was at school after a track meet. After a track meet? Yeah, I got one. Oh, my God. <laughs> and how did you concentrate on your lessons after that? <laughs> Why, well, you know, what I did was uh, I was a vivid reader of the Bible. Uh -huh. I remember that Judas betrayed Jesus, Jesus with a kiss. <laughs> with a hug and a kiss. <laughs> Judas uh, kissed Jesus? Judas kissed Jesus with a hug and a kiss. He did hug him and kiss him? Yeah. I see. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. You know, I was able to get that hug and a kiss out of my mind. <laughs> 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 oh, Anyway, Mr. Perkins, yes. what I'm saying is you probably should look into um, the matter of the office. Because I'm not... I would, I yes, know. I doubt very much, sir, whether that would require building permission. Yeah, but I understand that they applied for a building permit, you know. They did? They applied to the Paris Council for a building permit. And it was rejected? It's still being looked at. Oh, it's still being looked at. <laughs> right, so, I mean, the, yes, the and boys, they you know, they approve us. And Yes, well, maybe they intended to put a building. Yeah. The parish councillors held up their application, um, and therefore they have substituted a, um, a couple of trailers to the, do the job. Uh, I don't know, but okay. it's something that probably... That doesn't sound to me like a, a, a breach. Yeah. All right? All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, hello? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Mr. Perkins, uh, pleasant good afternoon to you. Pleasant and, uh, good afternoon to you too. A bright 2007. Thank you very much. Same to you. Year of decision, sir. Eh? Year of decision for all well thinking Jamaican. A year of decision? Yes, sir. Uh, what decision? Well, many decisions as to the direction which we want our country to go. Uh -huh. But just to shed a little light on what the caller before has brought to your attention. Yes. As it relates to the erecting of an uh, office. Yes. Injunction here. I have in my position a, a press release from the, the mayor. Injunction in St. Elizabeth? Yes. Oh, not in Manchester. Not in St. For the sort he sends with PNP constituents yes. office. Uh -huh. I have in my position here a press release which has been released by the, the mayor of Black River, Mr. Franklin Witter. Yes. And I will quote. Uh -huh. The mayor of St. Elizabeth, Franklin Witter, is this morning calling on Prime Minister, the most honorable Portia Simpson Miller, to reconsider her intent visit this Thursday officially open the office of the South East St. Elizabeth Trust injunction. The mayor is reporting that he has received word that this is the intent of prime ministers to open the water, to open a water scheme and then proceed to the constituency office. The controversy surrounding the structure of this came to the nation attention last week, where it was reported that the parish council has issued a stop order, which has ignored by the trust. Sources close to Horn complained that the parish council was playing politics and the office was not the constituency office of Mr. Norman Horn. The mayor responded by saying, in an event, the trust applied for approval to build on the land, but went ahead to build anyway. The parish council informed the trust that they had to present their building plans 
before the approval could be granted. We are awaiting copies of these plans and to date have not received not a single one. It concerns me that the Prime Minister intends to officially open this illegal building. This is an affront, affront to Ireland wide. This affront to Ireland wide. We will be taking up this matter at the Council this week to determine what our response will be if the Prime Minister follows through with her visit. The rule of law must apply to all, even to the Prime Minister and her candidate in every in as it is as simple as that. Oh, I see. The trustees of the trust are former member of parliament and campaign manager Derek Rochester, Norman Horn, Richard Parchman, Consul Caretaker for the Third Field Division, and his dear loving brother, Mr. Horn. I tell you something, Mr. Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. One Mr. Parchment, he's the head cook on back to Russia right now. Uh -huh. And me are talking about plain Jamaica language. As recently as yesterday, they are denying that this is not the constituency office. They are saying that trust fund office. But it was out on the street. They were out on the street announcing it with, uh, okay. what you call it? Uh, anyway, I have to, I'm out of time. But you say that the, pro that the, that addresses the intention of the Prime Minister to open the offices. Office this Thursday. And, uh, and you say that they were illegally built. Yes, sir. Right? And there, there is no, it is no matter of, um, of, um, it's a building, not, not. It's a building. I see. It, 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 it both. It's a container involved with building otherwise. I see what you mean. Yes, yes. All right, sir. Thank you very much for that correction. Okay, that brings us to the end of Perkins Online for today. We'll be back hopefully tomorrow, usual time and place. We look forward to your company. So long.